Sorry, I think I got everybody muted. So, uh, LGL84VL. Don't know who that is. So like I said, anybody that does not have a name up there is going to be um, taken off as soon as Phil starts his um, presentation. Jonathan, you still haven't changed it. I don't know how to change my name. I feel like a fool and I don't know how to fucking change it, man. Okay, uh, just click on your screen. Okay. And there should be a, a menu or, or go down to participant. Down on the bottom. I'm on, a, I'm on a, I'm on a, I'm on a cell phone. Okay. What is your name? Uh, What's your last name? Jusino. Spell it for me. J-U-S-I-N-O. I, I know who he is. Joe, I know who he is. Thank okay. you, Phil. I recognize his Thank voice. Thank you, Phil. I recognize his voice. <laughs> Happy New Year. Same I just seen it a good. couple weeks ago. <laughs> All right. I then, appreciate um, that. Okay, you can go ahead and uh, mute again, please. Okay. And then just like we did. I'll ask them to unmute LGL84VL. And they're not unmuting. They're not talking to us. All right, those that haven't changed, Phil, we're going to wind up losing them. So you go ahead and get started. And those uh, that are not. Got, somebody's got to put the PowerPoint up. Okay. Got too many people on it. It's slowing my computer down. That's why there it is. Got four more people. I'm gonna click as it's, or try to get in real quick. I'll do that after I get started. All right, let's see if this works, Phil. Is it there? I see it. All right. All right, good evening, everybody. Apologize for the delay, but we are off and running. If you can keep your phones on mute, uh, computers on mute, tablets, whatever you have on mute, uh, we'll get going. We'll answer questions when we're done. Um, I might be able to answer some of them as I go along and, you know, just go through the presentation. And then when we're done, we will answer questions as long, well, I shouldn't say this, but as long as it takes. Um, so 
just bear with us a little bit and we'll get started. So I don't know if Stan or Joe is moving the screen, but if either one of them can do that, we can get going. We got to close a couple of other screens here. Okay, there you go, Phil. All right, so the important dates of the mini mail survey is on February 7th. That was today. Rural Management Support System RMSS 4000 feature is locked out and will be locked out until April 8th. There will be no 4003 transactions accepted yeah, past this date. Yeah, that's, that's right. Somebody's got a mute. Here's an example. For Joel, please mute your phone, your computer. Yeah, depending on the total percentage. All right, Saturday, February 11th, the begin entry of the office walk data into the Rural Management Support System, RMSS. Does, nothing says they could not do these walk measurements prior to that. They just can't enter them into the system until February 11th. On February 24th, route settings and office walk data entries must be completed by the close of business. The mini mail survey stand up talk should be completed by this date. Go ahead. Let me see, I gotta close a couple of screens, sorry. See if that worked now. Now it did. All right. February 25th, the 12 day mini mail survey, as stated, items begins on all rural routes. Now, one thing you guys have to remember I know a lot of sorry of you have uh, are used to the old way we're counting. A lot of them have been counted in the past. Um, we're going to, it's going to be a totally different animal this time. It's nothing like you, you're used to. Those of you who haven't counted in the past, you don't know the difference. On February 25th to March 10th, the data entry must be made daily by the close of business for all routes. So anything that's counted must be counted every day, put on the form for you to look at and review. All mini mail survey entries must be finalized by 1700 central time. No additional changes will be accepted past this date on March 14th. On March 25th, that's when the effective date of the Rex evaluation will come into play. Carrier schedules will be updated in RMSS and the rural route scheduling will be updated also. And on April 8th is the end of the lockout for the 4003 rural management support system and all it will be available to all users. Go ahead. Okay. National mini mail survey will be conducted for the 12 working days beginning Saturday, February 25th, and ending on Friday, March 10th. Stand-up talk will be given prior to the mail survey. This will be your opportunity to ask questions and confirm procedures. The postmaster has that in RMSS. They, it is a standard talk that they have. They can just bring it up, print it out, have a service talk with you. All routes are included in the mini mail survey. There is no opt-in, opt-out anymore. Everybody gets counted all at the same time. Effective date of the Rex evaluations, March 25th. Go ahead. The mini mail survey is one small component used to determine the route evaluations under Rex. It is used in conjunction with other data gathered from the automated processes, such as the MDD scanner and the route mapping data. So most of the route evaluations are already being are already being done with what you're putting into the scanner, what's on the end of run reports, and what's on the new radar report, all the way back to May 21st of last year. So that's something a lot of carriers are not getting. We go all the way back. May 21st was the start of this process, and all the data that you've put in the scanners from that point forward until March 10th will be what's included in your evaluation, plus the very small percentage that's being done in the mini mail survey. Go ahead. All right, rural, rural, the rural mail count is no longer needed. 
there's going to be a couple. Yeah, the the measurement tool. You're not going to use that anymore. The post-it notes. You're not going to have them anymore. The, you know, the rural county mail, the 4239, not there. And all the information on the 4241, there's going to be hardly any on that 4241 anymore. We'll show you that towards the end. But all this information no longer needed. EAS employees will conduct a mini milk survey. There's 12 RECs office walk distances will be measured round trip jointly by the manager and the assigned carrier. And the data will be entered daily and in a timely manner, no later than the close of business than the current business day. Go ahead, Joe. The following items will be counted and or measured daily and entered in RMSS, random letters, random flats, your PARS 3982 labels, and your office walk distances. Obviously, they only have to do the walk distances once. They do that with you. They do it with a wheel. Um, they measure to the 12 places, which we'll cover. And that's going to be all they have to do for that. That's not going to be a daily thing. And the miscellaneous office activity. And these are the only items that are going to be, be, be recorded during this mini mail survey. There's going to be three forms used to collect this data. The Rex office walk the walking distance data collection form. So you, you do the distances with your manager. You're going to look at the data. You're going to agree or disagree. And you shouldn't there, you shouldn't disagree on that. The, the information there, the walk distances. I mean, if you guys are saying it's 15 feet and the manager is saying 14 feet, they should just give you the 15. That's what they're being told in the trainings. Uh, the daily volume worksheet, that's where the flats, letters, PARS labels are going to go. And then the miscellaneous activity worksheet. We'll cover what's covered in the miscellaneous activities. Kind of similar to the old column 17, but a lot smaller amount of numbers because all the column 17 information is now included in another standard, which we'll show you some of that. All right, this is going to be your walk distance form. You're obviously self-explanatory on the top. But you have to verify that you did walk the distance from the, you know, from your carrier case to the scanner storage area. That's that's number one. From the carrier's case to the raw letter and raw flats distribution case. And again, it's the 50-foot rule is no longer there. So it's from where you're standing in the case to wherever you got to go to get the raw letters, get the raw flats, go to the scanner, um, and all the other ones that we're going to cover. And if it's if it's 15 feet, you get 15 feet. If it's 65 feet, you get 65 feet. There's no more 50 foot rule with that. And it's from the, where you're standing in the case, not from the edge of the case anymore either. Uh, the measurements from the carrier case to the DPS letters distribution rack. Again, from where you're standing. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, from the carrier case to the FSS, which I don't think anybody in New York is going to have them during this count. Uh, from the carrier's case to the parcel hamper. Now, that's one question that comes up a lot is the parcel hampers. You know, what if they have more than one hamper? And it's based on the number 62. But if you do have a lot of large parcels and you don't have 62, but you still have two hampers, you, they should be giving you the double credit if that's a normal occurrence. If it only happens once a month, no, you're not going to get that. But if it's a normal occurrence that you have a lot of big parcels and you got two parcel hampers, they should be measuring uh, both of them and giving you both of them as a round trip. From the carrier's case to the assigned location or typical location of your vehicle. So wherever you park, and this is for the inspection. This is not for loading or anything. This is for the inspection. And so if you have a POV, this is one you're not going to get because the inspection is not done on the POVs in the office or at the time you're in the office. From the carrier's case to the CFS markup, you know, triple M centralized hold mail and back to the carrier's case again, round trip. The accountables distribution point. Now, if you don't, if they bring your, your accountables around in the morning, but you still have to go get your key, they should be measuring to where you get your key for this because you got to get your keys to do the inspection in the morning again. If, if you're on an LLV route, POV routes obviously don't have that. Uh, carrier's case to the hot case from the point where the carrier stands when the case in the mail to the point where the carrier stands. Sorry, pressing one button. <laughs> All right. Uh, carrier's case, location of hamper or other conveyance for loading your mail. 
if the if they have it right by your case, you're obviously not going to get much time or much distance for that. But if you got to go out to the loading dock or wherever you got to go, then you get the case uh, you get from your case to where that hamper is to where you got to get to that to bring it back to your case. And then from the carrier's case to the excess tray and tubs location. So when you're putting stuff away in the morning that you, you get the time, well, the distance for that. And then from the carrier's case to the location where the safety service talk is given. So if they bring you into the middle of the floor to have the service talk, they're supposed to measure from where you usually stand to where you're standing, where you're giving the, the safety service talk. And the safety service talk uh, just remember that they are supposed to be doing that and they are supposed to be timing it and putting it in RMSS. So make sure they're doing that. I know there's some offices that haven't been doing that and we, we're going to have to have discussions on how that's going to be taken care of. But just make sure from now on that they are doing the safety service talks and timing it and putting it in RMSS. Go ahead, Joe. Okay. So there's the walk distance form. Um, the RX walking distance data collection form is used to record the walking distance data for each route as it's indicated. The data is recorded on this form will then be trans entered into RMSS. The user must download the data collection form found in RMSS survey, and survey instructions in the zip file to view and print. So you should be able to see these. You should be able to verify these, make sure that it is what you agreed to. I'm telling the managers in my training, if you think the carrier is going to have a dispute, give them the wheel and let them walk it. You know, there's no reason why you can't do it together and just walk it together. They really, again, the multiplier is so small on this, they should not be fighting over a couple of feet. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, route settings confirmed by the manager on the RX office walking distance data collection form. You confirm a left-hand drive government vehicle or POV and carrier withdrawal allowance, yes or no. Uh, with this one, you know, if you have to go and do anything other than the hot case to get the mail, if you've got to go once or three times to withdraw mail, you should be getting withdrawal. If you're not, you got to let somebody know. Just most of the managers are given the withdrawal, but if you're not getting it, they have to bring every piece of mail to you except for the hot case, and that would be included in your... Uh, load time when you go to get the hot case mail. Okay, Joe. So just again, a recap of the office walk measurements, the scanner, letter flat distribution case, DPS letters, FSS, parcel hamper, uh, location of the vehicle for the inspection and the LOV or metrics routes. I, sh I should include the metrics. Uh, the CFS markup, Accountable distribution point, including arrow keys, if that's the only thing you're getting. Hot case location, location of your hamper and conveyance, location of the excess trays and the service safety talks. And if you don't have um, to the letter distribution case, if you're a non-withdrawal office, and of course, if you're a POV route, you don't get the vehicle inspection walk distance either. Go ahead, John. Round trip distances are recorded in the office walking distance data collection form or entered on RMS accordingly. If multiple trips are required daily, the dis distances should be multiplied. Trips to the parcel hamper are based on the number of parcels. However, if you receive large parcels every day that doesn't exceed the 62, extra trips can be built in. And again, the completed form shared with the carrier. Again, verify it, make sure it's right, it's your money. And there, it just this is what your daily volume worksheet is going to look like. It's going to have the PARS labels, letters, the manual pieces, the flats manual pieces, miscellaneous activity and the reason, and the miscellaneous activity and the actual time. That's all we're recording. So that's all that you're going to see on the on this little mini survey. All right, the daily volume worksheet. Prior to the actual survey period, users should download and print the daily volume worksheet, one per day per route, 12 per route. The daily volume worksheet will be used to record volume and miscellaneous activity time daily. And the, the manager is going to confirm that the finance number and, and date are correct. Record the data for each category of mail, the PARS labels, the letters manual, flats manual, and the miscellaneous activity time. 
And they're also going to have to use miscellaneous activity worksheets for recording actual time and use the correct tab for each day. Go ahead. And okay, here's the PARS label. Pretty simple. They're not supposed to, you know, make sure they're all printed out on the Friday the 24th or they're not supposed to hold them past March 10th. On the day you get them, the day you receive them, that's when you should be getting them. So they print them daily and they count the numbers, number received during the count and they are provided to the carriers for validation and review daily. Go ahead. Okay, random letters and flats. Random letters include letters that have not been run on any type of automation, letters from a manual distribution case, and DPS letter mail errors, your three M. So anything that you would have, whether you case it or bring it to the street, if you would have brought it back because it was out of order, missent, missequenced, miss, miss uh, whatever, it is counted in the random letter and should be included in this mini survey. You do not include the walk sequence saturation mailings. You're putting them in your scanner. You do not include flat size box holders. You're putting them in your scanner. They, those are already counted. They've been counted since May 21st. Random flats include flats that have not been run on automation, flats from the manual distribution case, DPS flat mail errors. Again, I don't think we're going to have that because I don't think we're going to have the FSS. And flat size mailings not received in white tubs or from local distribution cases could include mailers received at the delivery unit, loose or broken bundles. And again, do not include the walk sequence saturation mailings or box holders. Again, you're putting them in the scanner and that data has been being collected since May 21st of last year. Just with, if you could go back, Joe. And just with these, basically, if the clerk is handling it, you're going to get, they're going to count it in the mini mail survey. That's the good way, a good rule of thumb. If the clerk has to handle it, you get counted for it. It should be on your mini survey. Okay, go ahead, Joe. Miscellaneous time. They should be printing out enough copies for each route, just like everything else. Enter the area, district, MPU, and office name. Enter the three digit route number and complete each day. And what you get the credit for that is required customer communication. So if you've got to talk to the customer at the window or on the phone, they should be timing that and putting it here. Anybody with electronic parcel lockers during the two week period that the mail's being counted this time, if you have uh, parcels for that electronic parcel locker, they should be timing you in the number of parcels and the number of times that you are entering into these electronic parcel lockers, such as Amazon or any other electronic parcel locker that you have. Not too many carriers use the satchel, but if you use a satchel, the reloading of the satchel is, a, is an actual time that goes into miscellaneous activity worksheet. Um, if you have a non-personnel unit, you know anything in that non-personnel unit, that time, at least 15 minutes, is put on there. And then any other daily or weekly recurring activity, I know there's gonna be a few questions on this later, so I just wanna cover that quickly. Um, but anything that's not on this list that you don't feel that you have a credit for, and you should be getting a weekly uh, time for it in the miscellaneous activities, you should be contacting your postmaster and you, you should be, they need to contact Missy Boise for approval on that and should be done prior to the survey actually starting. So there's no uh, disputes later on on whether we got it or not. You know, there's some that, you know, we're gonna talk about probably, I see some of the people on here like Jeannie Hartman's route that we're gonna be talking about this and it will have to be timed and put in this and it has to be approved. And we, as we get there to the questions, we'll cover that a little bit more in depth, I think. Go ahead, Joe. At the conclusion of the of the daily volume data collection in RMS each week, managers should print the weekly summary of the daily volume Excel sheet and provide carriers with confirmation for confirmation. Managers and carriers should work together to verify daily volume data entries displayed on the worksheet. If necessary, managers and carriers should identify any discrepancies and make adjustments as needed daily. 
If there's something you don't think is right, just please bring it to the manager's attention right away before it's cased and delivered, uh, just so we can get it taken care of. You should not have to argue too much in this count. You guys are putting in anything with a barcode is automatically a parcel. Uh, you guys are putting the unscannable parcels in the scanner, so there shouldn't be a lot of dispute with this. If it's in a flat tub, it's going to be considered a flat. I mean, if, if, if they're running letters in the flat machine on the AFSM 100, you're going to get credit as a flat. flat. They're not taking them out. They've been instructed not to. Go ahead, Joe. <clears throat> All right. At the conclusion of the mail survey, the high-low option, if qualified, been qualified as 10 years as a career employee. Um, so if you're a PTF for eight years and a regular carrier for two, you qualify for the high-low option. You're going to have to com commit to take a sufficient annual leave to avoid exceeding the 2080 hours. And you're going to have to sign. There is going to be a 4241. It's going to be a lot different than what we're seeing. But you're going to have to sign um, that 4241. There's going to be two signature blocks. One's for the high option and one's to certify the survey to be correct. You want the high option, you got to sign that you want the high option and you're going to, you're going to use enough leave to stay under 2080. Now, a lot of people are, are very concerned when I say this, but it's just because we don't know what the evaluations are going to be. So I'm recommending everybody know, you know, gets as much information as they can, try and figure out what their routes are. But I recommend that you sign for the high option. And then if you don't have an option or if you just don't want to work that many more days, you can always go to low option. But if you if you don't sign for the high option, you're in the low option and all of a sudden you realize you're going to lose a lot of money. You can't go from low to high until the next mini survey, which will which will be in effect in October of this year. So you're going to be six months at the low option if you don't sign it. And again, if you want the high option, if you qualify, just sign that. And like I said, I recommend that you do sign it, but that's up to you. It's your choice. You may count your own mail to verify any management counts. There's no compensation when you do that. Go ahead, Joe. They, you know, the normal flow of mail should be insured. No extra efforts to clear out mail before the count. No curtailment of clerk hours on the last day of the count. Mail or requested de delivery dates should be honored. The language there is basic. Um, but just know that in most routes, you're not going to be counting much mail. You know, you're just going to be counting the raw letters, the raw flats for the most part. So there's not going to be a whole lot there to do. So you can verify that pretty easy. The only exception would be in the offices that don't have automation at this time. A lot of the intermediates don't have automation. So there will be some offices that do count more mail than others just because they're not fully automated. But most of the cases, you're probably only looking at about 100 pieces a day, if that unless you, you're not fully automated. Go ahead, Joe. If a carrier performs any withdrawal of function, the withdrawal allowance is added. So it's an all or nothing thing. So if you go and get mail one time, other than the hot case, you get withdrawal. Just make sure that they, you're getting that and there's no change for the remainder of the year. And if you get withdrawal, the number of requ withdrawals required is upon reporting, two additional in the morning, and then the final withdrawal of the hot case, and then upon returning from the route. And all they're getting, remember, they're not timing any of this. They're just measuring. The timing is all done with the, with the formula that the engineers have come up with. Carriers who do not get withdrawal allowance. The final withdrawal of the hot case is in conjunction with loading. All other mail should be placed at your case or on the ledge. You do not have to dump sacks, and you're not required to retrieve your DPS. You do have to cut straps in uh, plastic if they are plastic wrapped. All or nothing, no provision for partial credit. If management proposes a change, the union must be notified. 
Majority of the regular carriers must vote to accept the change. And it says majority. So that means if there's two people in the office, one said yes, one said no, it's not a majority. They can't change it. Change applies to all carriers. Cutting. Oh, sorry. You were done. Cutting the straps or plastic wrap carriers responsibility, obtaining the parcel hard hampers is part of that you know, walk distance. So you do have to do that. Go ahead. Okay, the postmaster or manager who conducts the count should sign every day. Carriers should receive a copy each day. Disagreements and disputes should be documented and dealt with as soon as possible. I would say do them right away. Once it's delivered, it's very difficult to go back. But again, I don't know what you're disputing in the mini survey. Because like I said, you're doing the parcels on the scanner. Anything with a barcode automatically is a parcel. If it's in a flat tub, it's a flat. So, and you don't usually see flats come in the, in the letter trays. So it really shouldn't be a whole lot to be disputing with the mini survey itself. Go ahead, Joe. All right, miscellaneous activity worksheet. A reasonable time allowance for recurring duties must be authorized or required by management. And it's again, recurring daily or weekly. Required customer communication. So if you're being required to go to the customer, you know, the window on the on a phone call, they have to do it with the stopwatch and they have to time you and put it in the miscellaneous activities. If you have electronic parcel lockers, they should be timing you for the opening of those, putting the parcel in and locking the parcel locker back up. If you use a satchel for whatever reason, I know there's some routes that do use them because they're basically city routes because they don't deliver anything out of the window. And so the reloading of that satchel is an actual time that the manager does have to time you for and put in in miscellaneous activities. If you have a non-personnel unit, um, there's not too many of them in New York, if any, but if you do have them, it's a, it's a post office that you know, doesn't have anybody, a clerk or anybody working in it. So you would have to sit there for 15 minutes and wait for the customer. So with the actual time that you're actually sitting there, you know, reloading the uh, vending machines and whatever else you're doing, putting the mail in the PO boxes, that is an actual time and miscellaneous. And then all other activity must be pre-approved by the DSS. That's Missy Boise in New York, uh, New York 3, and it's Brian Sanders in New York 2. And it's not covered in any other allowance. It's an actual time rounded to the nearest minute. Go ahead, Joe. And some of the column 17 comparisons, because the miscellaneous activity is kind of like the old column 17, but a lot of the column 17 issues are in other standards. So like the actual time required to place central markup system, computerized forwarding system, and mail in the designated location, covered any office walk distances, mail should be sorted at the case, and the carrier just places in the proper slot. So that's not a miscellaneous activity that is covered in, in the uh, office walk distances. Where no office personnel... Where no office personnel are on duty when the carrier returns from serving the route on any days of the week, the carrier receives the actual time allowance only for those duties performed over and above the normal functions of this day and the following workday. This does not include time spent counting mail or completing count forms, reference to PO 603, section 4081. This is covered in the end of shift duties daily. When these duties are completed the following day due to lack of personnel in the office, miscellaneous time should be entered in the mini mail survey. So in your, you know, from, from the time you hit return to delivery unit until the time you either hit PM casing or clock out, that's all an active actual time that's being built into your evaluation. So that's where you're going to do a lot of your case maintenance, um, Putting your equipment away, if you've got carrier pickups, you're putting the parcels where they go, putting your uh, mail where that you've picked up, all that's in the end of shift duties. And I tell people, you know, you, you don't have the wash up time anymore. So go to the bathroom and wash up in your end of shift duties before you clock out. Go ahead, Joe. 
All right, those carriers who serve a non-personnel unit receive a minimum allowance of 15 minutes daily for each unit served. Boxes, okay. All right. boxes located I'm, in- I'm uh, doing two screens at once. Boxes located in these units are not included in the route totals on the PS form 4241. The additional time above 15 minutes claim for servicing a non-personnel unit must be explained in the comments section. This hasn't changed. Instead of the column 17, though, it goes into the miscellaneous time. Personnel time or time used for purchasing and checking stamp stock. Uh, should not be entered. These times are credited when, when the evaluation is processed by Egan Information. Stamped, stamp sales are an MDD entry. Purchasing stamp stock is covered in the end of shift time duties. Replenishing stamp stock may be included in the miscellaneous time if it cannot be done as part of the end of shift time. So that's if your office is closed and, and you come back and you got to do it in an intermediate office or an RMPO or APO that you stop at. That would have to go into miscellaneous time. I guess that's a good time to cover your route, Gene, and whoever else has this situation, because I know Jeannie Hartman's on, and her route has Amish people on it that put packages in their mailboxes with, with money to put stamps on. But when she gets back to her office, it is closed. So when they're doing the this at the intermediate office, when Gene's doing whoever else has this situation in the intermediate office, that needs to be timed and put in the miscellaneous time. And it, it has to be, again, highly recommend your postmaster contacts Missy Boise and say that's what's going to have to happen prior to the count starting. Mini mail survey. I keep saying count. It is a mini mail survey. All right, Joe. All right. No entries are made in the column for routes using USPS owned or leased vehicles. The ISC will automatically credit appropriate time allowances as indicated in the PO 603 section 535.23 time spent waiting for vehicle repair or tow while on the route is not a recurring function and not credited in column 17 carry accumulates O time RCAs get paid on the green card there's no change in that uh, scanner credit automatic credit for the scanner setup carrier Scanner setup and return is an automatic credit. It's not credited in column 17. However, additional time to pick up and return the scanner may be warranted if not conjunction with other activities, not in a reasonable distance. There's no entries in this. It's the actual distance in the office walk measurements from where your case, you know, where you stand in your case to where the scanners are and, you know, round trip. So again, no additional credit for the scanner other than the walk distances. Go ahead, Joe. All entries in column 17 require explanation in the comments section. No entries are made in the column for these those routes with collection compartments or parcel lock, post lockers located in a centralized delivery equipment. There's no change. The times must be explained in the miscellaneous time column, and they have to be approved by either Missy Boise or Brian Sanders. Uh, again, Missy Boise, New York 3, Brian Sanders, New York 2. Other typical examples, actual riffling time to assess the quality of the DPS mail if separator cards are not used. It's now included in the standard S008 located access DPS letter trays. Time for returning the business reply mail to a designated location. Now is included in your end of shift actual time. Time for changes to edit sheets, red books beyond the time that would have been required on the back of the PS form 4240 trip sheets. That's all included in your actual time at the end of shift duties. So again, most of your maintenance and everything is going to be in your end of shift duties between that time when you hit return to delivery unit and the time you either hit clock out or PM casing. Actual, actual time to obtain and return arrow keys if the carrier had no accountables. 50-foot rule for obtaining accountables does not apply. Every route is credited with a round trip to the accountable cage every day, regardless of whether or not they have accountable mail. There's no additional time for keys. But again, if you have to go get the keys for the inspection, you should be getting that walk distance in the morning. Um, time required by management to answer customer questions across the counter or over the phone. If such duties occur daily or weekly, if applicable, that goes into miscellaneous time during the mini mail survey. 
If the scanner is not located within a reasonable distance of the carrier's casing area or actual time for the required extra trips to the secure and return to can the scanner, in the morning, it's the office walk measurement. In the afternoon, it's in the end of shift duties. Go ahead, Joe. Weekly safety talks must be conducted. The actual time required, usually five minutes per week, must be recorded in column 17. Multiple step fours and MOUs on that quoted. That's all recorded in RMSS throughout the entire 52 week period. That should have been started in May 21st and it should continue on. And every time they do a service talk, they should be out there with a the, uh, stopwatch and they should be entering that in RMSS. That's the managers doing that. Uh, again, the next one actual time for daily weekly stand up talks. In addition to the safety talks, same thing. It should be recorded and put in RMSS uh, every time they do one for the whole every day. And they do one for the whole 52 week period. Additional time credit, normally five minutes, must be given to the route if the manager elects to repeat a weekly safety talk for relief employees or a carrier who is not present. There's the step four from Vancouver, Washington. And again, it gets recorded in RMSS. So get that. I know a lot of postmasters haven't been doing that. You've got to enforce that. That's where you're going to get your service safety talk time is you now recorded every, every time they do it. With, they should be out there with a stopwatch and putting RMSS every time. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, actual time to take mail to vacation hold and return to the case if the hold location is not at the carrier's case. No time will be recorded for separating case of individual mail pieces on or into the provided equipment um, in the designated location. This function should be performed at the carrier's case. If applicable, you'd enter that in a miscellaneous time during the mini mail survey. Actual time to travel to and from the throwback case and deposit mail. That's included in your office walk measurement, either multiple trips if they uh, enter multiple trips if they occur daily. Uh, actual time to travel to and from the CFS CMU case and place the mail in its designated location included in the, uh, this is included in the office walk measurement. And if it takes multiple trips, if they occur daily, they should be entering that multiple trips. Actual time, if an additional trip is required to travel to and from the designated location and place or deposit triple M mail, missort, missequenced, and missent, uh, the step four out of North Reading, Massachusetts. And that's also included in your office walk measurement. And in the end of the day, if you're bringing back stuff, it's included in your end of shift actual times. Go ahead, Joe. Actual time to unlock, sweep, verify collection with a magnet, wand, or scanner. Close, close and lock the blue box, the collection boxes, including those located at a village post office. That's included in the standard for collection box. The standard is at S049. So that's already there. Make sure that's on your mapping also when you're doing that. Make sure if you haven't put that in your mapping that when you update it, the collection box is on there. Time for accessing key, unlocking gate, locking gate, and returning key when entering gate in communities. If not an authorized dismount location, include in the miscellaneous time during the mini mail count. If it is an authorized dismount, it should have been put in, in uh, mapping. And that distance should be there so that you get compensated fairly for that. So just make sure that's on there when you update your mapping also. Actual time for reloading a satchel, the step four out of Ellington, Missouri. Again, if you are doing this, that goes in your miscellaneous time during a mini mail survey. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, when a non-L route carrier purchases stamp stock at an intermediate office, show the actual time required to perform this function, not to exceed five minutes daily, and the other suitable allowance, set column 17 and explain in the comments section. During the mail count period, maintain normal frequency of stamp purchases at the intermediate office. Under RX stamps. Scanner and the rural activity scans. And there's no L routes anymore. It, everybody's got the same standards. Uh, so there is no L routes at this point 
When an L route carrier purchases stamp stock at an intermediate office, their purchases must meet the minimum requirements of 150 times the first class mail postage rate in order to receive the additional allowance. Um, as described above, not applicable under RX, stamp sales are entered in the MDD and restocking is covered in the end of shift duties again. So again, just make sure you're putting that in the stamp sales when you're doing it in the MDD and rural activity scans. Actual time to deposit collected mail in more than two separations. Um, uh, you guys are chatting, you're covering up my screen. Um, actual time to deposit collected mail in more than two separations. The, uh, the step forward out of Rochester, uh, Michigan and Omaha, Nebraska. And this is all in cover, included in the end of shift actual times. Go ahead, Joe. Actual time to separate parcels collected by zip code or designated by management. The step four out of Rockford. This is all going to be included in your end of shift duties actual time. Time to put notice left parcels on the proper shelf if required. Again, we included in your end of shift actual time. Time to locate and retrieve errors associated with mail history tracking system process. This is normally done during the riffling process. That's now included in your standard S008 locate and access DPS letter trays. Go ahead, Joe. On routes with intermediate offices, an additional actual time credit may be appropriate when the then carrier is required to unlock and lock doors at the intermediate office. Uh, reference to step four out of Beaumont, Beaumont uh, Illinois. All intermediate offices should be mapped as a lock pouch stop, either low volume or high volume as appropriate. Credit for locks is included in the S050 and S051 lock pouch stops. So make sure if you're doing an intermediate office and you're bringing mail back that you're getting the proper credit. <laughs> or the lock pouch, whether high or low volume. Basically, if you need a conveyance, it's a high volume. If you don't need a conveyance, it's a low volume. If DPS letter mail trays are received in a conveyance randomly mixed between routes, additional compensation may be appropriate. In instances where this occurs on a daily or weekly basis, the route will receive credit in column 17 during a mail count for the actual time required to move other route trays in order to locate the DPS letter mail trays for the specific route. In RX, it's covered under two standards, the S007 gather DPS letters and S008 locate and access DPS letter trays. For non-withdrawal routes, DPS must be distributed to the carrier case. Go ahead, Joe. Uh, 15 seconds a tray for partial or partial tray for DPS flats. Uh, received each day for locating the trays. That's not applicable. It's covered in the S014 gather DPS flats in the D015 standard locate and access DPS flat trays. Okay, with the service performance measurement scans, 28, five, uh, 35 seconds for each delivery point, sample alert work order with which requires scanning of one or more mail pieces. 18 seconds for each delivery point sample alert work order for which there were no is no scanning requ regardless of whether the test requires one, two, or four additional keystrokes, and 70 seconds for each collection mail work order. Under RX, the time is credited as a one or two step activity scan for the entries re uh, actually performed. So if you're going in and you pass the box, and you don't have any mail to scan, it's a one-step process. If you're scanning the mail, it's a two-step activity scan. Go ahead, Joe. Step four, settlements. That would include unusual conditions for column 17 credit, removing floor mats, the step four out of Yakima, Washington, if required before leaving for the route, record is miscellaneous time. If required in the afternoon before leaving for the day, this would be in the end of shift at duty's actual time. Uh, train crossings. If you have train crossings on your route, 
They should be marked on your mapping, but it also could be recorded as miscellaneous time if you have to wait for the train uh, on a regular basis. And I know there are quite a few routes that do have to do that. So that's, again, something that you should be contacting the DSS, either Brian Sanders on Long Island or Missy Boise, and the, your postmaster should be contacting them and just making sure that she is aware or he is aware that there will be miscellaneous time for the train crossings. Required use or relocation of a hamper when returning to the office, that's going to be included in your actual time at the end of shift duties. Step four settlements again, when more than one trip is necessary to unload the vehicle, the time to obtain the conveyance, all that's going to be included in your end of shift actual time. Time to pick up and return the scanner, if not conjunction with other activities, not within a reasonable distance. That's included in your office walk measurement. All step four settlements pertaining to the 50 foot, foot rule are irrelevant because under Rex, actual distance are measured in the office walk. So if you're only walking 10 feet, you get 10 feet. So whatever it is, it is. You know, some offices are big, they'll get over 100 feet. Some offices are small, they may only get 10 or 20 feet. But whatever it is, it is. Actual time required for an unusual dismount situation, such as using elevators, traversing an inordinate number of stairs, unlocking or going through difficult doors, et cetera. A Henry Letter in an Omaha, Nebraska, step four. If applicable in an if, uh, authorized dismount, time is added in the miscellaneous time. So if you have these, make sure they're on the 4003, make sure it's been mapped as an authorized dismount. And then if you have these situations, they will be added in miscellaneous time. Go ahead, Joe. Actual time spent separating encasing mail in a village post office. Post office boxes will be recorded on a daily basis in column 17. This time begins when the rural carrier unlocks the centralized boxes and ends upon locking the centralized boxes and a letter of clarification on there for the VPOs. That will remain in actual time and included in miscellaneous time. If anybody has a village post office, make sure they're getting the credit for that in the miscellaneous time. Go ahead, Joe. So, more step four is when more than one trip is necessary to unload the vehicle, the time to obtain the conveyance, again, included in, did we just do this one? Yeah, we just did this one, Joe. Okay, yeah, okay, now, we, now we're going in the right direction. All right, at the end of the count, the manager must meet with each regular carrier to discuss their options. High, high option is higher pay, but less time off, so you'd either be a J or an H route. Low option is lower pay, but more time off, K or a J, depending on where you fit. Again, the carrier, the route's evaluation must fall on more than one route classification, standard hours between 4411 and 5043. In order to be eligible for the high option, the regular carrier must have a minimum of 10 years of service from his or her retirement computation date. That's line 17 in your form 50, if you're not sure when that is. Um, so make sure you have 10 years from that date. Demonstrated no 2080 problems in the previous year, and you must commit in writing to use submission annual leave, not leave without pay, so that not to succeed the 2080 hour benchmark. Again, I highly recommend that you sign for the high option because you can always go from high to low. But if you don't sign for it and you end up in a low option and you you're you end up losing more money than you thought. You can't go from low to high again until October. So it's up to you, but I highly recommend signing for the high option. Okay, Joe. All right. Any disagreements? Attempt to resolve the disagreements at the local level. Disputed items must be brought to the manager's attention prior to casing and delivery. If a dis disagreement cannot be resolved locally, Provide written details to the postmaster for review and resolution. If not resolved, mail a copy to the NRLCA district representative, whoever that may be, or their designee. I like that term. District will evaluate and provide written reply to local management. Local management will advise the carrier in writing. 
If the carrier is not satisfied with the decision, the grievance procedure is the next step. Again, with the mini mail survey itself, I'm probably going to end up eating these words, but I don't see where there's going to be a lot of disagreements. I mean, you're not counting a lot of mail in the mini mail survey. I, I think the disagreements will probably come more from the stuff you're not counting in this mini survey and not in the mini survey itself. The, I mean, there's parcels you're putting in the scanner. So there, there's no, you know, going back and forth. What's a parcel? What's a flat? What's a flat? What's a letter? So, I mean, if there is a disagreement, by all means, bring it to the manager's attention. If you can't get a resolution, you're going to bring it to my attention or one of the uh, other stewards in the state. But you know, just it's there for a reason. There will be a disagreement form. There'll be a dispute form that you can have. You can definitely fill out. If there is some reason you're disagreeing with your manager on what they're doing, by all means, fill it out and file a grievance if necessary, but try to resolve it at the lowest level first at the time you're disagreeing. Okay, Joe. Remember, it's your paycheck. If you have problems, let someone know as soon as they occur and thoroughly document all disputed items. All right, so now is the time for questions. Um, so we're going to go forward with that. Uh, I see Tommy Hollins had his hand up for quite a while, so we'll go to Tommy first. Just, just a second, Phil. If we could, um, did you want to do that other? Uh, the oh, yes, 40, yes. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. First? Yes, please. I'll get it started uh, if you want to take a couple of questions while I get that. Okay. Um, All right, Tom, you had your hand up. You, you can ask a question. Tom Holland. Oh, sorry. Tom didn't know what he put his hand up early on, but I, I will give a question for Tom. When we um, have the authorized dismount, so you say you have a couple of places you have dismounts, do you need to enter that in the direct system underneath um, rural activity scans? With the, given. with the authorized dismount, if you don't have more than one trip for mail, you don't put anything in, in rural activity scans. If, all, you all have have heavy, one trip. if you can do with the mail at all in one trip, there's no reason it's already counted. The first trip is already counted and it should be mapped and it should be the distance should be measured appropriately in the mapping. Um, okay. If you have more trips for the mail than, than just the one, if you have a heavy mail volume day or whatever, then you, you should be getting additional trips for that. And that would be when you go into the rural activity scans and hit authorized dismount and you enter the total number of trips that you make. Same thing with the trip to door with the parcels. The first one is covered. If you have to make more than one trip because you have to make parcels, put the total number of trips that you take. Don't deduct the first one. Um, the first one is automatically counted, but the system will deduct it. If you put in, say you had to go three times, you put in three and the system will take the first one out and give you the two additional trips. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Yeah. I, I always, I always knew the trip to the door was one, one you didn't have to, but I didn't know that about authorized dismount. So now I know. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, Phil, I had the, the PowerPoint if you want to do that now. All right, we'll go to the PowerPoint and uh, go from there. Can you see it? I can see it. All right. So this I just wanted to bring up um, for the maintenance of the system in itself. It's very important that your edit book and your 4003 match. That's going to be how you get paid and going forward. They have come up with a system to try to get this so it's um, in a regular inputted so we don't have where carriers are not getting paid for new deliveries for months and months, if in some cases, years and years. So on day one through 10, the scheduled days for the carriers to review and input updates into their edit books. Um, you certify the completion on the AMS activity log. So you should be doing this in the afternoon. And it, it'll be part of your end of shift duties. So you're going to update your edit books days one through 10. Now, nothing says you can't update it days 11 through 30, but days one through 10 are what they've set up for you and, and your uh, postmaster to actually verify these and, and put into uh, webbies. And go ahead, Joe. So 
So on day 11, the supervisor or their designee can input the changes into Webby's, mail certify a verified hard copy of the edit book and the updated PS form 4003 to district AMS office, certify completion on the AMS activity log. So the postmaster should be sending this in on day 11 or fairly close to it. Um, it should not be day 18. You know, day 10 or day 12 is fine. Day 11 is the day they've they are designated for it, but it should be right around that day. They should not wait any longer than, you know, day 12. If, you know, if they're closed on day 11, okay, send it on day 12. Go ahead, Joe. Days 12 through 20, the PS 4003 must accompany the edit book. AMS will process the changes by the close of business on day 20 of each month. AMS will mail back to the delivery unit day 21 with the updates. Go ahead. Then day 23 through 30, this is where the supervisor and the designee in the presence of the regular assigned rural carrier is required to log into the delivery point maintenance, click download, plot any missing deliveries. In other words, you're going back to the mapping. You're going to view and clear any issues and submit. That includes traffic control points. So if you get a new development and you have new traffic control points to put in, you definitely want to do that. And again, we're doing this in the afternoon with the, with the supervisor or their designee. Allow 10 to 15 minutes for the delivery point maintenance processing. Then you go to the postmaster is going to log you into the line of travel maintenance, select partial review, verify and plot the new TCPs, and submit and certify. And then you can watch the little car go around your route and make sure everything is correct. If there are any errors, they will show up in red. And you, if they show up in red, you have to stop and correct them. It will not let you go any further. Now, I've sat there and watched a couple of these. I've actually helped a couple of carriers do these. Um, most of the time, it, for, for when there's only a handful of changes, it does not take the 10 to 15 minutes. But please, if it's taken a while, tell your postmaster not to keep hitting download. Because every time they hit download, they're adding another 10 to 15 minutes to the process. So if they hit it 10 times because they're not patients, it could take 100 minutes to do this. So please just hit download once, wait for it to come in, and then make sure everything's verified, and then watch the car go around, make sure it's correct. If the car goes around the route and doesn't stop anywhere, you're good. All right, Joe, thank you. Very good. Okay, for everybody, my apologies. I was working on multiple screens, and every time I was working, letting other participants into the zoom meeting um yeah i click the mouse nothing would happen i'd go back and so that that was the delay and some of the screw-ups there so my apologies for that so bill you can go ahead and take questions all right i see kathy have havert first yeah um i got a couple of things but i can wait um it said we were told we were practicing last year, but now they're saying they're going to implement that and we're going to start being paid by what we were supposed to only be practicing. The practice period ended on May 20th. You should have been told that the, the were live on May 21st. On okay. May 21st, the, all the additional scans that we were doing were built into the evaluation and that's where the system was live and that's what you should have been told. Oh, we were told it was postponed again. Um, the, the mini mail survey was postponed, but the actual scanning was not. Okay, um, that's fine. And how do, can I keep asking my questions or do I have to wait till another turn? Uh, keep going as long as you don't have a whole lot. Okay, how do we get pa paid for package pickups? Like I go, I have three package pickups normal on, an every day and I pick up probably about 130 packages daily, it seems. Um, how do am, how do I know I'm getting paid for it? Should I keep track of what I pick up every day? You get paid on that. It's a rural activity scan. You need to be putting in the carrier pickup option in the rural, rural activity scan and you need to be entering how many packages you're picking up. If you're yes. picking up 130, you're going to have to do it twice because it'll only allow you ent to enter 99. Yes. So anything more than that, you got to enter twice. 
Okay. And um, is there a place to check on our rec scan and fix them at the end of the day? So, um, what do I want to say? If I miss a scan, uh, if I miss a rec scan. Um, Depending on what it is. Okay. Now, if it's a box holder or a WSS, you can enter that. Um, the carrier pickup scan is going to be a little bit harder. I mean, if you have a count and you just missed it and you know what the count is, you can enter that. Um, but really, you're not going to be able to enter a whole lot more than that. The second trips, um, the additional trip to the door and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to enter that in the, in the post office because it won't, it won't accept it there. Okay. Now, what happened? Could we, so uh, I, could, yes. Sorry, Kathy. Um, could could we have some other people and you yes. uh, get yep. at the end of the line and ask a couple more? Okay, I can do that. I'll Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you very or much. Jervis Mary. Oh, hey, everyone. I'm still awake. <laughs> so, um, I have a question. In our office, we do not go and retrieve our flats or anything from the hotkeys as that is a clerk function. So you're saying you don't have withdrawal? The, the new, the new uh, regime now has the clerks bringing us our flats and the mail from the hotkeys, but aren't- Did you get withdrawal in your last mail count? I can't remember, that was so long ago. Well, if you got with the last mail count, they can't change it without a vote of the regular carriers. Oh, let me write that down. Can't change. Okay. Um, I have many other questions. I'm not going to take up the time because there's too many other people that have questions. All right. Anna Ubedes. And me. Hi, Phil. Um, the one. I never heard of before was you said like a, a difficult door to go through or something like that. I have a pickup that I, on Fridays, there's nobody there. So I have to ring the bell and it goes to their cell phone. So I got to wait for somebody to answer the cell phone to buzz me in. But then I actually have to get something to prop the door open because it'll lock me out. So that's a miscellaneous time, actual, you know, actual time it takes you to do that. They should be timing that for you. Okay. Good luck getting one of your supervisors to go out there and do it. But Whoa, thank you. I already talked to them about that one parcel locker with the key and all that today. Okay. All right. Uh, next one up I have is Melissa Libby. Hello. All right. So you mentioned the um the accountables drop off that if we receive the accountables in the morning from the clerk, so the clerk brings us the accountables, but when we come back and drop off the accountables, it's a different location in my office. Anything so should we be day, anything at the end of the day is an end of shift duty. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that that we're not supposed to be because, you know, distance wise or anything like that. Anything okay. You end of shift duties from the time you hit return to delivery unit to you hit clock out or PM casing is an actual time built into your evaluation. Right, right. I just wanted to double check that, <laughs> you know, uh, just want to get it right, you know. Um, I have one other, I have an, a house that they put up a chain on their driveway that I have to move and uh, replace. That's a time thing then because I have to do it every pretty much every day. And it's the only way for me to turn around. Then they're going to have to time you for doing that. I don't think that's safe. That's probably something you need to talk to your supervisor. But if you have to do it, it's going to have to it, be a, a miscellaneous time. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the only safe way to deliver down that street <laughs> is for me to be able to pull into their driveway and turn around, which mm -hmm. is their approval and everything else. And the postmaster already approved it. So I just wanted to make sure before I push the yeah, issue. You know, make sure that you, you contact Brian Sanders on that pr prior to that. So there's no issues with that, but that should be okay. Time. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. 
All right, yep. David Arvanides. Hey, can you hear me, Phil? I can hear you loud and clear. All right, uh, quick, the first question is, uh, we used to get credit for one letter for four upside down letters in our DPS. Is that still in effect or no? Four upside down letters will be one raw letter, yes. Okay, that's good to know. And then the second question I have is, uh, for weeks now we've been getting manual letters and a tray next to our DPS. Um, obviously, I'm assuming that's still manual letters, but what happens if it stops during the count, but it comes back again after the count? What do we do? They're coming in a tray from the plant? Yes. If they have, if they're coming from the plant with your route number on it, on the radar report, they're going to be listed under NLM letters, and they already are counted, and they have been being counted, so they will not be part of the mini survey. Even if, even if they're manual letters, they're out of order? They will be in the in the end of run uh, thing under NLM. They're not DPS letters. They're they're counted as NLM letters and they're raw letters, but they're already counted. So we're not going to get credit for manual letters. They're already the counted, count? Dave. Dave, they're already counted. They're already counted. Well, you will be getting credit for them on a yearly basis. They're not part of the mini survey. That's that's fifty two week average. Huh. Okay. I guess uh, that's that. I guess. That's all my questions. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank You're you. Welcome. You're welcome. Bye -bye. Margaret Duffin. Hi. This might be um, kind of Dave's uh, question also. Okay. So uh, in our office, our clerk gives us a tray of all letters that comes in from the plant. Are all those counted or some of them that? Some of them are 999 mail. Some of them are holdouts. And some of them are all mixed up. How do we know which ones are counted already? They will also be in the L NLM column in the radar report. Okay, so when I get that tray from a clerk, I already know what is counted and what is not? That they should not be mixing the trays that come from the plant and what they're sorting. They are mixing them. They mix them. Then they, they're going to have to count them all because there's no way of going back and daily and figure out what was what. So they're going right. to have to count them they're mixing them. They shouldn't be mixing them. If so what do, so the plant, anything that comes from the plant with a uh, uh, sticker on it or a, a label on it, that is already counted. Yes. Yes. Okay. It, it, anything in the spray that does not have a ticket on it is not counted. Anything the clerks have to count is, you know, anything the clerks have to sort will be part of the mini survey. They okay. should not be mixing the plant mail with what they're sorting. Okay. That's it. That's it. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, Zeb Bomas. Uh, two uh, questions I hope it don't take very long. Um, uh, first of all, when it comes to the uh, all the walk distances and stuff, uh, a while back we were uh, management had been given some kind of deadline to have that stuff done. So we went and we measured all that stuff. Um, I don't is that has that been input because our super our uh, postmaster excuse me is has left on on detail for a number of months. So we have an interim postmaster right now. So we're gonna have to do that again. Or yes, you, yes, you should do that again with the interim uh, OIC. Okay. Um, uh, the other question has to do with the, with EOS. Is there a minimum, maximum amount of time we should be spending? Like, if we take too long to do it, is are we gonna are they gonna call us out on it? Or if you know, I I know this it's how we get can, can gain time on the route, but I don't know if there's like uh, you know like when we used to do load time, it used to be like oh if you take too long, they're gonna start you know cutting you down and stuff like that. So I don't know if there's too much time to be spent uh, at end of shift. There are some managers that are pushing back on it, but it is route specific. Uh, my route, I don't pick up anything, uh, hardly anything. I don't have any carrier pickups. So it's an all residential route. There's no reason why it should take me more than 10 minutes unless I'm doing edit book maintenance or whatever else that day. But most days it won't. But if you've got a big carrier pickup, it is what it is. Whatever your end of shift duties end up being is what it's going to end up being. If you got a big carrier pickup, you could be out there over half an hour. You know, it, it depends on the route. It's all route specific. Should we should we maybe be um, uh, doing our, our uh, markups at end of shift, or, or does it matter when we do you it? Can't delay them. You have to do them in the morning, unless you okay. bring the DPS to the street, and then it would be part of the end of shift duties. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
Anything else, Seth? No, that's everything. All right, very good. Daniel Fasanella? That's me, Phil. Thank you. Okay. Um, what is the difference between the radar report and the end of run report? The end of run report has your basically your DPS, your NLM, and then some offices, the, the FSS, where the radar report it will be a more detailed report and have the bundled flats on that also. And it, uh, the AFSM mail that's sorted in the, on the machine with the flats. Okay. So where do we find the, where do we get a report of our rec entries? Um, Postmaster should have been bringing that up. It, it went live about a week and a half ago or so. Your postmaster can get that in RMSS under uh, rural reports. Okay, thank and you. We've asked in the trainings that we've had, we're asking them to post them for you so you guys can look at them. Now, the radar report is a day behind, some cases two days behind, so they may not be accurate for that day, but over the course of a week or two, we're being told they're going to be fairly accurate. Um, there is a there is a little bit of a leeway that we got that um, right now is sitting at 19 percent, but it's possible that that number comes down based on val validation studies that's being conducted. But right now that the uh, bundled flat should be about 19 percent higher than what you're saying, but that's a negotiable thing based on validation studies. If we validate it that over a course of, you know, a period of time, like two weeks, that it's accurate, that number will probably come down. If we don't validate that it's accurate, it'll probably stay around 19%. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Julie Dillon. Hello. Hello. So I'm, I'm wondering, how do I get credit for my end of shift duties in my intermediate office? Because when I get back, I don't hit my J button you know, my end of shift duties because I'm not done my route yet. All right. Anything that's done in there that would qualify as an end of shift duty should be a miscellaneous time. Again, that's something you're going to have to talk to your postmaster. Make sure that Missy Boise is on board with that. Uh, New York 3 is DSS. So anything that you can't do in your office now, I, I, exactly what you're doing, you know, I, you would probably need to know that um, if you're doing edit book maintenance and, you, you know, there's no reason why a manager can't come to your home office and do that with you once once a month. If you don't have a lot of changes, it's not going to take long. But okay. other stuff like postage and stuff like that, if your office is closed when you get back, you yes. know, that, that's going to have to be timed, you know, in the intermediate office in miscellaneous time. Okay, and putting my trays back and putting everything away and all that. If you have to do that in the intermediate and not in the the, the end of shift duties office, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Yep. I see Kathy Havertz back on top. Yeah, one other question. Um, if so I have to walk the town on my route, even though it's a rule. Um, there's been times, and I don't mean to, I had forgotten my scanner. And how do we not get paid for that? I, I've never heard of a job where you do something, but you don't get paid for it just because. Explain what you mean. What's that? Explain what you mean. So I got out of the truck and I, I didn't have any parcels. I didn't even think about it. I walked the whole town and got back to my truck and realized I forgot my scanner. So supposedly I didn't get paid for those footsteps because I far, forgot my scanner in the truck. That That's not true. Okay, how do we do... Your do we... If that's an authorized dismount, the authorized mm. dismount is covered. Oh, now, okay. if, you, if you forgot your scanner on multiple occasions, you're probably going to be asked, you know, how come you're getting paid to walk this and you're not walking it? But on one occasion, that's not going to happen. It's not going to affect your salary. It's only happened a couple of times. I think I gotten better at it, but so <laughs> I, I'm not too worried about it, but I just wanted to make sure that that was okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, we want you carrying your scanner with you. That way we can always go back and say, yes. look, you walk that. Yes. But there has been times like I got out of the truck, I did something, I'm like, oh, I forgot my scanner. 
And they're like, well, it, you know, if you didn't have a scanner, you don't get, but okay, that's as long as it's counted in. And yeah, it doesn't always happen, but it has happened. So I just wanted to make sure how that works. All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Jeffrey Lashon. Yep. Hope I got that right. <laughs> yeah, Lashon. Yep. Okay. Um, I have two questions. My first one is um, the parcels we get in the morning. Um, you said those are already counted except for the ones that don't have the scans on them. Anything with a barcode is automatically a parcel. Right. How you, how you put in the scan or how you deliver them, whether you put them in a mailbox, a parcel locker, or deliver it to the door is going to be how you get the credit for it. Okay. Okay. That was my part of my first question. And so what you said, the ones that don't have um, a barcode on, we have to put under um, something else, but I missed what you said. We had to put it under. Under the rural activity scans, that's an unscannable parcel. Okay. Unscannable. And again, the credit is where you put it, mailbox, parcel locker to the door. Okay. And I have the same issue as the, uh, one of the other people that were talking. Um, we weren't really told that this was already started. I've had um, like um, mail come that I've not put into my scanner. Like um, uh, like the the mailings that everybody on the route gets. Right. The box holders are the Yeah, way. I've had some of them not put in. I... <laughs> I'm not going to be able to go back to May 21st and put these information in. I know management was supposed to train you and they didn't do a very good job of that. But we've we never been trained on anything. Yeah, we we our postmaster has been gone. Yeah. Um and we didn't get trained on any of it. Um matter of fact, I just asked yesterday, like, because there's some that come with like uh is it WSS on them or something? And I asked, does that go under a flat or the, you know, the box holder? Because we've not been trained. If it's got a specific address, one Main Street or current resident, that is a flat or a letter. If it just says current resident or occupant, that is a box holder. And just remember, address orientation does matter. You know, that's okay. something that, you know, is not being put out there enough. But the address orientation does matter on the letters and flats. Okay. So if it's a, if it's addressed to each household, if it's got a specific address it, and it says WSS, you put in WSS. Okay. If it just says occupant or current resident or anything like that. It's a box holder. Okay. And, you know, address orientation, depending on letter or flat. Okay. And my last question, um, how does it work if we use our own vehicle on our route, but when a sub works, they use a, uh, Postal vehicle on our route. The route is a POV route, so that's how that's no. how it would be credited. They're the rural carrier. Ours are not POV. Ours we have to use our own vehicle. That's a POV route. Yeah, but when they use the postal vehicle, the route will be a POV route. Is how he does it is not going to change that. Okay, because I didn't know if that changed the way we get paid or the way he gets paid or no, no. Okay. That's all my questions, I guess. All right, Jeffrey. Jeannie Thank Harmon, you. you're welcome. Hi, how are yeah. you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to clarify the trips. Um, so you had talked about the key first thing in the morning, and then, um, of course, our certifieds aren't done by then. So we do have to make two trips to get the key for the inspection and then later for the certifieds. Um, so anytime we do that extra trip, we have to log that on the count every day, the second, the second no, time. No, that should be part of the rural walk. That should be the walk distances, the, the office walk distances. And right. Like it, you, you have the one round trip for the walk distance, but then we have to actually do it twice. Well, if I were you guys in that situation, I would get the walk distances for the keys included into the walk distance for the inspection of the vehicle. Okay. And the same for um, kind of covering uh, the other trips to to get your mail for a withdrawal. So for the withdrawal, there's so many factors, like is it three trips to get it? Is that all factored in or do we actually have to manual put three trips for the That's day? That's all factored in with, with what we told you, what I said earlier. 
the, the one in the, in the beginning of the day when you first get there, the two additional trips in the hot case, that's all factored in. Okay, all right. And that's it, that's all I got. All right, Mike from Watermill. Well, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, when it comes to like the out of town, is that considered out of sequence? Yes, it's it, anything that you would, whether you bring your mail out to the street or you case it, if you brought it out to the street and you had to bring it back, they have to count that as raw mail. Okay, uh, are we still putting everything in piles like insufficient address, bacon, unclaimed? Yes, the markup credit is an automatic based on volume. Uh, the engineers came up with a formula for that. Um, but you know, you're not actually counting the markups. It's one less thing you're going to argue over, but it's an automatic credit based on the volume of the route. But you are um, still separating them out. Okay, the other question I have is, are they going to be counting outgoing mail? What's that? Are they going to be counting outgoing mail? No. Again, a formula that came up, the engineers came up based on the volume that you receive. That's one I just don't understand, but that's what the engineers gave us. All right, one last question. Um, I've been hearing from some people that some of the numbers in the computer for the bundled flats are not correct. How do we do that? Again, that's something we're looking at validation. That is something that we do have that 19% cushion if we don't validate, validate the numbers to be more accurate. Okay, and what if flats come in like all messed up and it says a bundle, let's say 50? How does that work? If the clerks have to handle it, it will be counted during a mini mail survey. All right, thank you, Phil. All right, Mike. Uh, Jennifer Stickles. Hey, I just talked to you today. Jennifer Stickles. Sorry, I couldn't find my mute button. Okay. Um, <laughs> the question for you is, um, you had told us that we get calculated for the packages coming out. You saw how we're set up. We have post cons and pumpkins. So we bring the pumpkin over to our case and then we take the post cons out to the door. I usually have two every day. So am I making two trips for those? Three? Yeah, that should, be, that should be the two trips be, you know, because you have two different conveyances, yes. Okay. Um, and I think that was it. All right. Yeah, that was it. Everything else I asked you earlier. <laughs> okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Melissa Libby's back. Hello. Okay. So uh, you, with doing the academy, I have to check email. Should I be doing that at PMK, uh, PM duties? Or is that supposed to be separate Any, time? Like Anything with the academy is supposed to be separate. It's not going to be built into your route. That's what I, I just wanted to make sure that that's, uh, you know, checking emails and stuff like that is not supposed to be done while I'm in PM duties. I didn't know for sure. That's anything, all. Anything with the academy should not be built into the route. Okay. Any update by any chance? I'm just throwing it out there. They any said update? that there's, uh, they said that there's, they released the thing for the academy. I, I have not seen an update. Okay. Yeah, because I haven't either. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Andrew Alt. Yeah, Phil, one question for you is my radar reports show zero bundles and they show zero AFSM. And how is that counted? Is it everything manual that comes in? Um, that we brought to the attention of uh, the national office and of headquarters. They're supposedly correcting that. Again, that's why it's not going to be accurate uh, over the course of a day or two. It's going to be ac hopefully be accurate or more accurate over a couple of weeks. Um, that's that's the best answer I can give you. you. We have brought it to the attention of the national office. They are negotiating. Um, that's probably going to keep the 19% number up where it is because it's probably going to stay that high. It's probably not going to come down because so far the numbers have not been accurate. There's been too many offices with zeros on those bundled flats. Because it's, it's been zero for the whole time. That's probably not um, <laughs> something's wrong with that office and they probably should contact 
the help desk on that then because most of the offices have been getting numbers in there. It was just a couple of days they had zeros. So if it yeah, because it's New Fain, New Fain is where I'm at, and they all get their numbers. But I'm Bert, so I'm a separate zip code. Ah, but that's I'm, it. You got okay. Your postmaster has to contact Missy Boise and link the uh, intermediate then. Link the intermediate. Yeah, because if the intermediates aren't linked, they're not going to show up. All right, I will let her know. Thank you very much. All right, Andrew. Mary Shawshank. I'm still awake. Here we go. So I have a question about the 4003. 4003 is pretty much the base of our pay. How can your red book not coincide with the 4003? Because the two systems don't talk to each other and your postmaster has to manually make sure the 4003 matches the edit book. All right. Good answer. Um, I also have another question. On my route, I have a comic book shop who has carrier pickups every day. I'm not permitted to pick these up. Usually a supervisor does it. Now, should I, I be getting credit for, for this even though I'm not doing it? I, if that was on my route, I'd be filing a grievance if I wasn't allowed to do it. I can't imagine a comic book shop would be mailing out so much stuff that I couldn't pick it up. Well, um, the, the reason why is I, it's in the middle of my route. And even though technically if I left my route at, say, quarter after three so I could be there at 3.30, I'm not leaving my route. I'm just stopping where I'm delivering to go get this guy. I, again, if it was my route, I'd be filing a grievance. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. The, the, uh, the, I got a little sidetracked there. The, the 4003, is that going to have any effect on the count if it doesn't coincide with the red book? If the if you're going to get credit now, the 4003 system is locked out until April. So you're going to get credit uh, based on the numbers that are there uh, on there. So if the, the box file. Uh, boxes aren't correct you know get it in the edit book and then we can update it when the, when they open it up again okay that that would be for for all the routes in the office then because not not just one is affected so we're just going to have to wait till after the fact and address all this yeah, you know all the postmasters have been told that they you know the lockout was today so yeah yeah i know trust me i know all right. Okay. All right. Thank you, Phil. So Hello. Um, I just wanted to bring up another example of what could potentially be an um miscellaneous time. Uh, what if a carrier has to lock up the office at the end of the day or on a Saturday? Would that be miscellaneous time? It's a possibility. Um it depends on what they have to do and when they have to do it. If it's just setting the alarm, you do have a 30 second window there. So they could actually set the alarm and put their scanner back, you know, hit clock out. If it is a smaller office that doesn't have an alarm and it has to be a key. Yes. It could be a couple of seconds added there for the uh, lockup duties, just similar to the old uh, Saturday clearance, but most of it should be included in the end of shift duties. Okay. That's it. That's it for me. Okay. Holly Ryle. Really? Hi there. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so mine are about intermediate offices. I have my home office and two intermediate offices. Both of the intermediate offices are our MPOs of two separate offices. So I have three different bosses per se. <laughs> um, so on the lock pouch for these intermediate offices. Um, it was up in the air last time I talked like last fall. So they never, and I kind of forgot about them. So they never got mapped. Um, so when do I map those on there? And um, is that something that will be immediately credited like for the, you know, like the 15 or 20 minutes or whatever it is for each office? You, or you is, is that is that averaged over a year before it will actually show up? 
No, that's part of the mapping process. And if it's been mapped properly and it's on the 4003, you'll get the credit for it, you know, effective March 25th. But it isn't on there. I forgot I forgot about it because it is it on the 4003. It's no, because it's it's then not it, no, it's gotta, you know, then you're not gonna get credit for it in this in this part of the count. It's gonna have to be added later because if it's not on the 4003, the four thousand threes are locked. Okay, so if it's added like after April, whatever that date is, um, then it won't be picked up until the next count. Is what you're saying? And, unless it's enough for a base hour change. For a base hour change. So okay. it, well, an, an hour change. It's got to be an hour change to go to change it. So if it's not enough to move it up an hour, then no, it won't. It won't take effect until October. Oh, that that okay. should have been put on the four thousand three as long as you've been doing it it should have been on the 4003 yeah well it got overlooked because it was we did our mapping put it back last april <laughs> or, or whatever it was and then then it was up in the air for the fall count whether or not it was supposed to be a locked pouch or not so we never revisited it until until just now and i completely forgot about it so um uh, my other concern is about the radar reports uh, in the RMS re RMSS reports um, that all the information is being translated onto my route for all three offices. Um, and again, with the intermediate offices, they're going to have to be linked. If they're not linked, the radar report will not show up. It is being recorded. Once they're linked, the, the information will show up, but they do have to be linked. They have to be, how did, now, how do they get linked? Tell Your me again. postmaster has to contact Missy Boise. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's it? That's it. All right, thank you. Iman Coons. Uh, first, thank you. Uh, second, a uh, couple, I've got a couple questions. Uh, is there going to be an opportunity to redo the mappings? I had a couple carriers ask because they didn't fully understand what they were doing. And so they'd like to replot some of their park points and whatnot. The opportunity now will come after April 8th because what will happen now, everything's locked out. You, you can't update the 4003. So the line of travel will not be updated until April 8th or, or later, depending on when the update on the 4003s by your office is done. So once that, you know, once the system gets in place where you're updating your edit book the first 10 days, it gets sent down the next 10 days, you get it back, you'll actually be you'll be able to update your mapping every every month in that final 10 days of the month. Um, so, uh, I had a, oh, a comment on the rain radar, the bundled flats. Um, I'm finding that my bundled flats, when I first have access to the radar report, it says zero, but if I go back, if the postmaster goes back and prints that day, maybe two days later, the bundled flats are showing up. The counts are a little off, but at least they're not zero. Um, so maybe that could be the issue with some of the other people who are saw, seeing their radar with the bundle flats being zero, give it another couple of days and run the report again. It, are yeah, we gonna... It's a little weird how they work with the radar reports and the bundle flats in particular, because it doesn't seem to update every day. It just seems like it updates randomly. So there are some days that are showing up as zeros. I know Highland had zeros one day, and then the other day, a couple of days later, they had like a thousand, which they never oh. get a thousand flats in that office. So, you know, so it's very strange how the radar report works. It again, all the radar report has been brought to the national office's attention. They're bringing it to the headquarters' attention. So hopefully, we can get that worked out. Um, I made a suggestion we count the bundled flats this time to that would be our validation for the two weeks. I don't know if that's going to go or not. Um, yeah, that would be good. Uh, so when do we so do we have access to the parcel counts? You're so okay. Daily, you can go into RMSS under your activity scans, and yes, you would do it daily. We're also supposed to have these numbers 
around the time the mail count or the mail survey starts where we can actually see what we've done in the past year. Okay. Um, I'll, so are we also gonna have to wait for that to get our drive time? Why don't, I'm, I'm curious why we don't actually know what our drive time uh, value is supposed to be yet. And that again should be up prior to, or right around that May, uh, February 26th timeframe, 25th timeframe. Um, that's hopefully they get that. You are supposed to be able to put all your numbers into a revamped 4241M, which is the mail count calculator. You are supposed to be able to put that in there and know what your evaluation is by the end of the mail count. I'm okay. hoping that's true. Uh, you know, that's what I'm being told by by the national officers. So I'm hoping that's a true statement because we've always been able to do that. Um, and my last question, uh, when we were first talking about getting the system up and going, we were supposed to be able to have access right through um, the union and then eventually the carriers access to our numbers. Is there any update on when we'll be able to have access through um, the union website or whatever portal they create so we can look at our numbers and not have to go through the postmaster every day? I, at this time, I don't know if they're going to do that or not. I know they've okay. been saying that all along, but at this time in time, I don't know if that's going to happen. All right. Thank you. All right. Victoria Sape. Hi. Hi. Um, two quick questions. Um, those yellow stickers that we have to peel off the letters, are we getting any credit for that? No. No. Really? No. Really. Okay. okay. The other one is um, the WSH flats. Do they go under the WSS in the scanner? No. Or no? no, that's part of the bundled flats. Okay. So they're going to be counted automatically, not in the count. Right. Right. Okay. That's all I got. All right, very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Stacy Darren Beck. Yep, Darren. you got it. Hello. <laughs> so my question is, is 99% of the time our postmaster is not there in the afternoon. We don't have a supervisor. So how do we get like these radar reports and stuff like that? You can ask for them the next day. They're like I said, they're a day behind anyway. So. Okay. I mean, I, I, when the uh, classes that I've been doing with the postmasters, I've been asking them to post them daily anyway. But when they come up zeros, then I get a lot of phone calls. But, uh, but okay. I have been asking the postmasters to post them daily. Okay. So, like, to do this mapping and stuff, like, I have requested because I have two dismounts that are new and I've been requesting, I started requesting last week or the week before to do these dismounts correctly. And all I got told was they're gonna go on the 4003 as other. Okay, as long as they're on the 4003, you'll get the credit for it. It's okay. just when you update the mapping, when they open that back up, make sure it gets mapped. Right, because that was my request is I want these maps, so I'm getting right. credit right. for them. Right. And I'm being told, well, one's only temporary. Well, I don't care if it's temporary or not, I want credit for it. Like the poor lady is 80 years old. I don't oh. foresee her getting any better anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. So the hardship, it, it's got to go in there as the other. And it, it, if, as long as it's on a 4003, you'll get credit for it, but it should be mapped also when it, when it comes back up uh, in April. Okay. okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, so we talk, oh, you're welcome. We talked about the uh, end of shift duty. So I'm in an office where uh, there's no one there. So if the postmaster and I come up with an agreement on activities, you know, for instance, you talked about uh, replenishing stock stamps and things like that, that has to be timed. So we're, a, we're in agreement and we have to get that cleared with Missy ahead of time before we can put that on our reports. What happens if she doesn't agree with us? Well, you always have access to the grievance procedure. But in your office, you're saying the postmaster is not there, but are there clerks there? No, the office is closed when I get back. Okay. So, so we have to do it all the next day. All right. So that's going to be the miscellaneous time. So yes. you know, if, she, if she doesn't approve it, you have access to the grievance procedure. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Laura White. Yes. Hi. Um, my question is, 
um, when we have time, when we have to take time off, whether it's sick leave or vacation, um, we don't have enough subs in our office. They find whoever can do it, whether it be a CCA um, or a city carrier. How are we getting credit on recs if they don't know what they're supposed to do? Well, if it's just the once in a while thing, you'll get the average for the load time and the end of shift duties. Um, as far as if they don't put in a box holder or something, I would ask to, to look at the RMSS activity reports. And if they, you know, everybody else in the office got a box holder that day, but your office didn't, I would put one in the next day because chances are, unless you are in an office that, you know, some of the routes don't get them, chances are if everybody else got them, you got them. So just put it in the next day. Yeah. I'm just, I, I worry because um, like, you know, we're going to start taking, um, trying to take some time off. We have um, two subs for six routes and um, one sub does not, um, does not work a lot. So, and the other sub just started about a month ago. So, um, so basically we're going to have carriers. They're not going to be there for a week at least. And um, nobody to do the route. Nobody that's competent to do the route. Okay. So you, you I know, don't, do you, do you get along with your coworkers? Yes. All right. Have them look out. You know, you should be looking out for each other, you know, making sure that the information is recorded whether the sub does it or whether a postmaster does it or whether one of the other carriers says, hey, give me that scanner, you know, make sure it's uh, be being properly accounted for. And that doesn't oh. mean any stuff. It just means getting properly accounted for. Well, yeah, I mean, basically right now, I mean, we're just hoping they get the six scans done. I mean, I mean on the street, they don't know what they're doing and, you know, they're not going to record any of the parcel pickups or, or anything like that at all because, they, they have no idea. What yeah, the parcel pickups, I mean, you, you're, you're not going to be able to go back and do them. You, yeah. You're, you're going to lose those if they don't do them properly. But, you know, you got to tell your postmaster, you know, what your concerns are, and they need to address they it. They they don't have, yeah, well, they, they basically said they don't have coverage, and they can't do anything. So, I mean, I walked well, they into can, work. They can talk to the people doing a route, make sure it's being done correctly. They certainly can do that. Well, I came back last week and they didn't have anybody do my route. They brought the entire route back for me to deliver the next day. And, and you know, I, that happens a lot, unfortunately. I'm very concerned in the area around Saratoga and Gansevoort because those, there's routes there that don't get delivered on, on almost a daily basis. So yeah. I'm concerned with those routes. Okay, so I will talk to my coworkers. Thank you. Okay, Laura. Ginger Stickles. That's not her stripper name, by the way. Oh, um, my. No, it's not. Um, so I have two questions, actually. Uh, all right. So the first one is, so in my, I guess you call it the intermediate office, but my duo, my office I was duoed from, that's where I do most of my holds. So is that a daily miscellaneous time or an do I take an average and the and the mini mail count. If you're doing your holds in that office, that would be a daily time in the mini mail survey. A daily time, okay. And then the uh, second question is: so um, our 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 other two routes, because of the duo situation, they weren't able to get mapped during the time frame, and we uh, we just started mapping them last week, but we didn't even finish the one. So are, is it my understanding that they are now locked out and they can't? No, you can still do the map. The only thing locked out is the um, 40, 4003 program. They can still do the mapping. So they can still do the mapping. Okay, right. that, that was it. Thank you. Okay. Lori Wing? You're still on mute, Lori. Hello. There you go. Hello. Okay, here I am. Hi. Okay. My question is, is you said that everything with a barcode is automatically considered a parcel. What is considered an unscannable parcel? A parcel that doesn't have a barcode on it. Okay, but what what size? Because my postmaster seems to fight everything. The, the parcel, the size has not changed. 
what was a parcel in the 2018 count is a count is a parcel now. So if you have a, a photograph, if you have a, a soft item with a rigid item in it, doesn't fit in the case without damaging the case, still a parcel. Okay. You have, you so, have photos, do not bend, it don't have a barcode, it's an unscannable parcel. Okay. So, okay, when you're measuring like the letters in flat, so they're measured in pieces instead of inches? They're counting individually, just like any old count, yep. P in pieces, because yes. we measure everything in inches right now. During a mail survey, it's counted. Okay. Um, on Saturdays, when we get back, there's nobody in our office. So how do we record our numbers? What do you mean? Because on Saturdays, our office closes at 11 or 12. We don't get back to 3 or 4. How are we recording all of this information for Saturdays? Uh, again, what are you looking to record? Like all of our numbers are in the day counts, everything that we bring the back. Mail survey, there's going to have to be somebody in your office when you get back. Okay, because there's nobody there after noon. The mini mail survey, the two Saturdays, you're going to have to have somebody in your office. Okay, great. Okay, also, um, we were told to never touch PM casing to put everything in end of the day duties. Okay. What is what is PM casing? Casing mail in the afternoon. Okay, because we were told to never touch that, only put everything on end of day duties. Okay. Is is that we always do end of day duties, no PM casing? Well, if you're casing mail in the afternoon, you hit PM casing. But that's a requirement by management. So if they're telling you not to case mail in the afternoon, then you don't do it. Okay. Awesome, thank you. All right. Brian Thompson. Hey, Phil, how you doing? Good, Brian, how are you? I'm good. Uh, so this question is, I think I've already asked you this before, but I just wanted clarification on it. So like I told you prior, uh, our office is not recording the safety talk time. They haven't been doing it since the beginning. So, I mean, you're talking five minutes times, what, 44 weeks or whatever. I mean, that's a lot of time. How am I going to get credit for that on our row? That is being negotiated at the national level. Um, about 50% of the offices have not been recording their uh, service talks. I think the number is actually higher than that. Um, when I ask that question, who's recording it at the postmaster's training, they all look at me like a deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. So that's a number that's being negotiated at the national office right now. I don't know what they're going to come up with. They, they need to come up with something because the postmasters were told to do this and they haven't been doing it. So there has to be some kind of number they put in for these service talks. Okay. So like the old mail counts, you know, we had the option of signing the form or not. Now you're saying we should be signing that form. I mean, if we sign it, then are uh, we? No, 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 no. You you sign for the high option. You, the the sign is certified correct is going to be your your choice. You okay, don't so sign it, that it's accurate. But you, okay. if you want the high option, you have to sign for the high option. There's two different signature blocks on the 4241. Okay. One's for the high option. One is for um, to certify that you think it's correct. And you, if you don't think it's correct, don't sign it. Right. Well, that, I'm I'm not seeing the time there. So if I don't see the time. I'm not and, and that's you know that's correct. where I think most people are are not going to dispute what's going to be counted because so little is going to be counted. I think it's going to be disputing you know, not being able to see the numbers, not being able to see the service talks and stuff like that. I think that's where we're going to have our biggest issues. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, buddy. All right, Brian. Steve Sabat. Hi. Um. Okay, Cole. You can hear me. Um. So I just. I like a couple of questions. Um, what did I do with that? No. Okay. So they're going to, uh, for the mini mail survey. Uh, they're going to be walking us to get one of the one of the, the walks is going to be from our case to our packages. Correct. Correct. Okay. Now. But in order to get our mail to the uh, to the loading dock, 
and then in our packages does that count as two trips once you start loading you hit begin load and you don't hit end load until you're done and put all the equipment away okay so all that's just being counted into low t into low truck low time right. Correct. There's nothing with the amount of trips or distance or any of that. Nope. Okay. So because what I, what I would normally be doing is I'd be normally going to my packages and I would I usually bring it uh to my case and I I, I get it sorted. But that that's gonna that's not no, no, no. The, the the sorting of your parcels is already counted in the parcel credit. Okay. It, you, when you begin load is when you have everything sorted, you have your, the mail in your conveyance, if, or unless you have to tear it down and put it on the floor, um, then you, then your start time would be when you start moving the mail from the floor to the conveyance. But if you're you're tying down, putting the mail into the conveyance, you, you put the parcels in order, you put them in the conveyance, your, your begin load time starts when you start pushing the cart. As soon okay. as you put your hand on the cart, you should be hitting begin load. And there's no, and there's, and it's not being calculated based upon distance and trips. It's just being that the amount of time in the general. Load time is an actual time. Okay. Um, my other, my other question is this. So when we go to the hot case or the case where all of our um, some sorted random flats and letters that are not, uh, that, that we have to go to, um, sometimes me and Margaret would see that they would put bundled mail in there or wrapped mail in there. Is that being part of our bundled mail or how if is it? If it's bundled mail, it's bundled mail. Even if it's in the, even if it's in the- uh, If it's bundled up and it's for your route and it says carry a route one or two, whichever one you are, it's, it's bundled mail. Okay, it's not mail that's being counted. It's bundled mail. Okay. Um, that's good. That's why that's what we figured, but I, I just wanted to make sure on that. Um, and my other question is this. Now, as as for like the 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 high option, low option, that's only for the 10 years that you are a regular carrier, not for the years that you were a sub. Not for RCA. A P, PTF is a career employee. Again, it's line 17 in your 50 if you wanted to look for when it when it was because that's going to computate your retirement date and that's when you became a career employee. Okay. All right. That's all. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Steve. All right. Jennifer Stickles. Sorry, I had one more question for you. Um, for the other routes, it's not for my route, but um, the non-DPS that they do that are in other like um, offices, uh, like Phil, he has all that non-DPS. Um, is, are, does he have to count that individually? How's that getting counted? If it's not coming to the route, like when he goes into Harris or Kiamisha or one of the other intermediates, if it's not specifically for the route from the plant, in other words, the clerks had to sort it, then he, then it will have to be the manual count during the mini mail survey. Okay, who's going to be doing that? Are, are the people, like, I know Taylor has non DPS in Kiamisha and Phil has it in Monticello for Forestburg. So is he going to have to count individual pieces for Forestburg mail? A, a manager that has been trained will have to count the individual pieces, yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, that was it. <laughs> Great. Just trying to help them out in the office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Have Melissa a good night. You too. Melissa Libby. Hey, sorry. One more question. Um, I'm going to presume, maybe I'm wrong, um, firm bundles, they're still counting as, they're gonna count as unscannables at this point because those were or used to be counted as parcels. They're not, right? They're not piece counting those. I mean, they're, are, or are they gonna count those flats as part of bundled flats? Uh, can you repeat it? I missed part Okay. Of so the firm bundles of flats, I get them for the schools. Okay, that, no, that's no, that's that's still an unscannable parcel unless I it has. Just, yep, just wanted to make sure of that. Okay. Now the PM casing, are they looking at other ways for us to be doing separate tri second trip other than hitting the PM casing? I don't know. Okay. All right, that's it. I'll leave you alone. <laughs> All right. Promise? Thank you. 
Uh, I mean, no promises. It is me after all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Bye. Jeannie Hartman. Hi. Um, quick question going back to um, the couple of people that asked about the um, intermediate office on the not showing up on the radar report. Um, I'm sure Missy Boise is going to be a busy girl. Uh, and if, if an office isn't added on to that, even though the number says zero on the radar, radar report, in the background, the, the route is still getting credit for all the numbers, right? Yes, yes. It, 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 once they link them, the numbers will show up. It just has to be linked. And, it's, you know. Yeah, as long as it's not linked, the numbers are still there. We just can't see them. Correct. Okay. And then on the six scans, I know they hammer, hammer, hammer the six scans. Of course, with my route, with all the Amish, I have lots of extra stuff with the parcel pickup and, um, oh, you know, trips to doors, stuff to pick up the parcels. Now, if a sub, and we all know that, that this is happening um, to some people, there are some subs that just don't care about doing anything but the six. And I actually got in a little argument slightly with the postmaster because I said, well, you know, they have to be doing, you know, they do the six scans, but there's also, you know, box holders every week that have to be entered in and stuff like that. And if they're not doing it and don't care to do it, at some point, you know, we can go to the postmaster, can't we, and argue that they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. He said, no, I only have to make sure they're accountable for the six cans. But if it's a continuous problem and they're not putting all that stuff in, I mean, I know once once in a while forgetting something is fine. And we all know that even we're going to forget things. But if it's a constant problem week after week where they won't enter things, do we have a, a grievance with that? If the postmaster is not making them do it? Uh, in my opinion, yes, but the national office doesn't agree with me. Okay. Because, I mean, like I said, you know, he's like, I am only responsible for making them do the six scans. I said, well, they're That's responsible for putting in. That their box. job is to do the scans that are, are there for them to do. Now, if they only right. have scans, absolutely. But if they have a box holder, if they have a, a, a WSS, their job is to put them in. And the postmaster is required to make them do that. That's and, what I, I had argued with him. And he's like, nope. And I said, well, if somebody continues, because I've seen, not in my office, but I've seen, you know, I'm only doing the six scans. You know, I who cares about the rest? And, you know, I have a lot of extra scans on mine, you know. So, you know, I do worry that if that does happen eventually, that, you know, I can't, I can't like make, I hold them accountable. One, and just like I told one of the previous carriers, if you get along with your, your coworkers, you got to watch each other's back. You know, yeah. If you got a sub on there, you know, he's not putting in the stuff like that. You know, mm -hmm. just have the other carriers watch your back. And if you're just off for like one day, go in and put them in. Yeah. And if, the, if not, have them go to the postmaster and say, look, everybody had a box holder. You got to make sure Route 1 got a box holder, Route 2, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, we're pretty good. Like every Friday, we'll be like, everybody put in their box holder. We announce it. So, you right. know, we're pretty good at covering each other. But okay, I think that's it. All right, Jeannie. Thank you. Sheila Oslander. Good evening, Phil. Um, evening. Everybody has a question about the clearance slips. That is in the afternoon duties, correct? Yeah, yep. Okay. And do it's not a set time anymore. It's afternoon duties. Okay. And when they put the slip back into the, um, where they count the raw letters, that counts as a letter, correct? Well, they should be handing you the slip. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Kim Suter. Hi, Phil. Hello. Um, we have a sub in our office and he, after holidays, he'll run parcels for all three routes and, um, and then he'll do authorized dismounts for all three routes. Is the three routes still getting the credit for all that? Or is he just like doing it and nobody's getting credit? 
for the parcels themselves, they're getting, you're going to get the credit based on where it's addressed. The only mm-hmm. time that doesn't happen is on the Sundays and the holidays when the route is uh, being delivered under dynamic or um, static routing that with the Amazon and um, UPS parcels on mm-hmm. Sunday. Uh, other than that, the parcels are getting credit to where they're addressed. Now, where you may lose is if they're not changing the route, which they should be changing the route when they go in back and forth. But with the loading time, if they're not putting the loading times into each route, you may lose with that. Okay. And what about the authorized dismounts? He doesn't as authorize this dismount for as me. Long as, um, he's doing them, as long as he's doing them, um, the only thing you might lose is if there was, you know, on a day after a holiday and there was heavy mail, um, mm-hmm. it, it didn't put in the second, you know, uh, authorized dismount. But the first one's an automatic credit. Okay. And what about um, the non-canceled stamps that's in the DPS? And I go along and I cancel them. Are we still getting credit for that or or they do away with that? There, that's not that's not a credit that you will see. It's it's a credit in the sorting. That's you know, just you know, as it so we can happens. we can set them aside and every four non-canceled stamps we get DPS, one letter. Well, in the DPS, you, you should be taking them out and getting them counted as a raw letter. Okay. All right, so it's still the same. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Thank you. Yep. Victoria Smith. Okay, so my question for you is going to be at the end of day, after you hang up your scanner, we are in an office that we're forced kind of or have to lock down the office. So we're shutting off lights, closing doors, and double locking doors. Is that going to go under miscellaneous time? Yes, yes, it would have to, yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Kathy Hebert. Yeah, not that I never, or not that I've had to yet, but I know getting subs is like horrible. Um, so if, if you, if your route is not delivered one day, you just deliver and you don't get any extra pay. There's nothing. I mean, trying to get people hired on at the post office is like good luck anymore nowadays. So this is just going to get worse and worse. Is there something uh, to give the carrier any extra pay because they're doing extra work on their day that they, it should have been done on their day off? Or is there maybe something that could be talked about for future since it seems like care, uh, subs are going to be hard to come by if you have if you're getting your relief day and the mail's not getting delivered we have a step four settlement agreement already for a full day of relief so that you know you make sure you verify ask for assistance which if you don't have any subs you're not going to get then they have to pay you the full days of relief so you document how much mail is left and you'll get paid based on how much mail was left Oh, great. Just wanted to know, just in case, (laughs) once I heard that, I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, thank you so much. All right. Victoria Smith, you're still on the top. You got another question? No, sorry about that. Okay. All right. So we got Seth Gordon next. Hey, Phil, how are you doing? Good, Seth. How are you? I'm great. Um, I got two quick questions for you. Um, So the S99 mail, you're, you're holds and uh, forwards and stuff that's pulled out of your DPS. Uh, should that be being counted every day or is that already uh, being accounted for? That's going to be in that L- NLM category. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and then for the mail that's in our DPS, that is for uh, another route in the office. Usually we're just handing it back and forth. Um should we be putting that back in the hot case and getting it counted that way or just ha- handling that separately? Is there a different way that we should be doing what that? I, what I would recommend with that is you put it off to the side on your case and bring the supervisor or postmaster over to count it and say, you know, just say it's came out of the DPS. It's got to be counted as raw letters. Okay. And then both carriers should get credit for that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Sue West. Hello. Um, just a, 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 a little bit of humor about the scans. Um, everybody's being told they have to take their lunch. Lunch, lunch, lunch. We're not required to take a lunch. 
But if they're making everybody take a lunch, this is management's thing. Why is it not one of the six required scans? It's just an opinion. Um, it makes me laugh. Um, also, I just wanted to point out and clarify that um, the mini mail survey is only 5% of your route and the walk distances is only 1% of your route. The rest is the, the other 94% is all this automated stuff. So when Phil says the discrepancies are gonna come not from the mini mail survey or the distances, because that stuff will be able to, you know, it's, it's not a lot that we're gonna be counting. It's the stuff that we can't see and that we're not comfortable with the reports um, that, that I see the problems lie. That's all. <laughs> and for the most part, that is going to be an accurate statement with the percentages, but in the intermediates like Monticello that goes into four different offices, I mean, those postmasters are going to be counting more than the, the 5%. So just, you know. Or, yeah, so, you're right. That's true. So. For the most part, if you're in a one, you know, just in one building, it's only going to be a very small percentage that's going to be counted. Yes. All right. Melissa Kennedy. Hey, Phil. Um, hey. Hi. So in our office, we have tri trays that the clerks sort loose flaps that are mixed. They come mixed within all the routes. They sort them and they put them in tri trays, which we retrieve. They're separate from the loose buckets that come from the plant that's already sorted of our routes. Now we retrieve that every day. It's basically like a hot case of flaps. Should that be under a walking distance or would that be timed as a withdrawal? Um, how should that be calculated? Well, that's going to be measured as a walking distance to the flat, you know, wherever you got to pick those flats up. Okay. So it would be well, in anything the... a clerk, you know, anything a clerk sorts, you, you have to get counted. Should we combine that with getting our hot case letters or would we do it separately? The measurement's going to be to both. So. You're going okay. to get both. Okay, so include that in the hot case. Okay, yeah. that's all I wanted to check. Thank you. Okay. Stacy Marola. Hi there. How are you guys? <clears throat> um, a couple questions that a few uh, a few speakers now just kind of covered. Uh, for example, today I had a bunch of uh, missorted DPS in my um, trays, five inches, about 90 pieces, I counted it. And I would get credit for this during, in, in column two for, for random letters, if, if, if that were the case, if I brought it yeah. to management's attention, yes? Yeah. During the mini mail survey, yes. Yes, okay. Um, even if it's five pieces. Um, if it's one piece. It's one I'm piece. sorry, if it's one piece, yeah. So that's still kind of going into like the, the throwback case. So, But I would we, separate it so they can count it at your case and then they can bring it over and sort it to where it go, belongs. Right, right. I'm pretty much separating all of my, you know, uh, insufficient addresses, UTFs, all those kinds of things. Are those piece counted when we, when we, are we pulling them and, extra and extracting them as a random letter? Yeah, yeah. same um, as it's always been. Same as it's always been. You, you, anything that's you would bring back if you brought the DPS to the street has to get counted and gets counted as raw flats. Okay, so even the holds, let's say people, anything, uh, some people anything, take their mail to the street, the some DPS. people case their mail. It doesn't matter. Anything the DPS you you pull out? Anything you pull out of the DPS. Okay, so any... If we pull it out of the DPS, it's going to be counted as a random as a random letter. Correct. So, random raw and manual are they interchangeable? Raw is random. Random yes. is raw. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. And manual should we not be using that terminology, or is that strictly automated processed material? Um. Are you still there? Yeah. So the word uh, yeah. manual and some what? of some of these counting <laughs> sheets, it says manual letters, manual flats. So it's the same as raw. It's it's, okay. it's the terminology. Okay, good. Um, so also with the holds, uh, Phil, when you are re-delivering holds, and you know it's a significant bundle, is there such fact to the rumor that if it's more than eight pieces, you get an unscanned parcel credit? That's only for DPS. 
Okay. If you know, if you have to bring whole mail to the door because it won't fit in a box, that becomes a miscellaneous trip to the door. Miscellaneous. But if the whole mail fits in the box, there's no additional credit. Should we be getting any other kind of door credit or miscellaneous door trip to door for uh, a parcel pickup? Or should that be assumed that it's included within that um, instruction if you've actually received the paper from your uh, supervisor in the morning? That would be the carrier pickup, which has its own credit. It does get its own credit. So no yeah, extra. As long as you're putting it into rural activities. The rural yeah, activities. exactly. Okay. Um, one question about uh, perhaps a new timed event under the miscellaneous activities. Our office has our office has a blue bin um, that they require us to take our missorted or misthrown parcels to. Any misthrown parcel goes over here. Well, we get them in all shapes and sizes, and sometimes they're really large, sometimes they're really small. When you're digging through a parcel hamper and a gigantic uh, cage, so at what point do you say, do I take one trip? I mean, sometimes you're taking uh, multiple trips. In fact, seven trips the other day uh, I took. I had seven misthrown parcels, and I'm like, that's just bad, and I'm not getting credit for handling them. You know, if you see the carrier and they happen to pass you, I can pass it off. <laughs> the rule of thumb is, is it's going to go into that bin and then they'll have some other carrier deliver it uh, later. So a timed event or distance, what, what, what are your thoughts? Well, in that particular case, probably an additional distance, walking distance. It happens daily, um, probably on average about, you know, three to four times a week. We're constantly, I mean, there's a person that just runs misthrown parcels. It's pretty bad. So that that extra distance should not be considered in part of our um, activities every day. I mean, it's it is kind of ridiculous. But <laughs> yeah. we yeah, we can I ask, mean. we can talk to our supervisors and see see how they want to how they want to deal with that. Um, right. I have a problem where I additional walking distance yeah that's what i was i was thinking i don't think they want to wanted to time it um a question about the uh clock in so when we enter the building and we go grab our scanners um should we be going to get the scanner first or stopping at our case to drop our our effects off our coat and things it when should, should that activity start because i know the measurement's going to be from your case to to the scanner you should be picking but in general up we're running in <laughs> you should be picking up your scanner first that's pretty much what we do but you end up waiting that good minute to try to log in is there any any scuttlebutt about uh graying out the clock in feature which i understand city carriers it's grayed out in their scanner but yet we constantly double hit triple hit all these ridiculous things there there's been discussion on that there's been a lot of discussions on what to do with the the sensitivity of the scanner um exactly what they end up doing okay i don't, I don't know okay all right thanks phil all right stacy seth gordon Hey, Phil, two quick questions. Um, so for the mail, uh, raw, uh, um, things that are messed up in our DPS that we're getting county for. Um, so each one of those, each piece of missent, missort, miss, you know, all those is each piece is its own individual raw. And then upside downs, if I understand it correct, every four counts is one. Correct. Okay. Okay, I got that then. And then um, kind of piggybacking off of what Stacy said there for the clocking in. So when we, I walk in the door, my start time is 7.30. If I walk in right then, um, and then, you know, I walk over to my scanner and I clock in and it takes, you know, you know, it, uh, it has to do the radio test and then you have to scan your badge and then you get the, the hazardous materials message and you get these three different messages every morning, you know, the safety messages and then Sometimes you get the, you know, a, a minute long video from, from DeJoy, you know, stuff like that before you can even get to the clocking in period. So I walk in at 730 and sometimes it's, you know, 732 before I get to actually clock in. 
Um, and now my postmaster is telling me that, you know, because I still put 7.30 on my time clock. Because that's the time, you know, I pick up my scanners, 7.30. And, you know, if it's minute, two minutes off, he's telling me, no, I need to put the actual time that was, you know, he gets on the computer. Is that something that he should be telling me to do? Or is it just kind of when I get there is when I'm, I put on the sheet? When you get there is when you put on the sheet. If he wants you to look, match it up with the scanner, tell him to talk to people and get the uh, safety talks taken off of there. But that's not going to happen. Okay. That's not yeah. going to happen. But... Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, Seth. Uh, Mike from Watermill. Hey, Phil. How are you? I have three questions. Okay. The WSS goes into that system. It says WSS, and then it says one, Danielle. It says, in the past, please stop. In the past, when we counted, if we had the purple packs, it would be however many stops we have, that's how many we get it, credit for. Is that still accurate? Yes. Okay. If I have a flat or a letter and it says do not bend, is that considered an unscannable package? The letter, probably not. The flat, probably. Okay. Now, when we're measuring, we measure from the case to the car, from the case to the hot case, Case to the scanner. And then if we have a skid and a, and a hamper, we measure those as well? What was that again? We measure to the skid and the parcel hamper as well? The skid for what? Because sometimes they put packages on the skid. Well, the if you have hamper. two conveyances, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and the safety talks we have to get credit for because we always get it on our case and she just says sign and read it. That's not a safety talk. Yeah, that, that's, what, that's what I'm told. So we have to get paid credit for that, right? Any service and safety talks she should be uh, doing and she should be timing them and putting them in RMSS, yes. All right, Phil, thank you. All right, Mike. Alicia Butney. Hey, Phil. Uh, question. Those sample scans, my scanner, like every other day when I get the same, well, I get sample scans every day. But when I go to try to scan them, it's like it picks what it wants to scan. So, like, I'll try to sit there, say, just for example, the first address I'm at. I'll, I'll, it'll say, you know, scan your flats and letters. It won't scan anything. I'll sit there for a good couple minutes won't scan it then i'll go down the road the next house it'll take the the next two letters with the scanner but then i'll go to another house you know another 15 minutes later it'll ask me for another sample scan it won't take it so how is there a way they can fix this i would assume so but i don't know how yeah because i mean we're i have to get credit for that don't i well you're going to get credit because you're, you're doing the scans yeah okay because it, it just won't let me scan the letters half the time or the flats. It's like it's picking and choosing what houses it wants me to to do. Okay. And I could go like three days in a row on all my samples and not scan one thing. And then the next three days I'll get samples and it'll scan every letter and flat I have. Okay. So I don't know if that's a scanner issue or I just wanted to make sure I'm still getting credit for it. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get it either a one step or a two step process depending on what you do. Okay. All righty. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Yellow Hi, last one. Oh, guess not. Um, question. I have a lot of people that have on and they pick up the packages with money. And I noticed a couple of people on here that I know did not ask the question of where do they get credit for that when they pick it up? Well, it's you're going to get for putting the postage on it in the end of shift duties. And again, like in Jeannie Hartman's office that is closed, she's got to do it in her inter intermediate. That's going to be in the miscellaneous time. It is an actual time. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Stacy Maroli. Okay. One last question. And that's the last page, the signing of the um, verification of the survey uh, right below the high option. Please, can you verify that that high, low option is literally only for those eligible to take it? And the guarantee for signing the uh, 2080 guarantee is for only that option. Um, my postmaster and others 
have always tried to force people to sign that even though they're not eligible for that high option, but just signing the guarantee to, to you know, meet the that, 20. The signature on the 4241 is strictly for the high option. And that's and what I thought. Signing, you are signing that you will use the, the enough leave to stay under 2080 if you take the high option. Correct. Correct. But it's not for, for junior carriers who have no way to no. even. No. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Mike, you have another question or are you? Yeah, sure? I, I forgot something. If you have a custom conversation with the customer outside the office, whether it's whole, forward, whatever, do we count that? Outside of the office? No. No, okay. Um, so when they measure all the stuff I was asking before, they're going to take a total. That's going to be times six days a week, right? Yes. And the high low option will it tell you what the amount's going to be per year for the high and what's the amount going to be for low? It'll tell you what the evaluation is. You can go on the national website and see what the uh, salary would be for your staff. All right, thank you. Okay. Karen Lungi. Hi, can you hear me? I uh, always. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I have two questions, I think. The first one is I have the end of run report here, and there's a lot of things on here that we don't know what they mean. Like does the multi point that used to be mail that came right to you that wasn't in order. Uh, but I don't know what that is. And then they have COA, which used to be change of address, but it can't be that because there's too many. Do you have any idea what all these things mean, or is there a way for me to find out what they mean? Without having it right in front of me, I, I couldn't tell you, but yes, there is a way to find out what they all mean. They're not not by my bosses. So is there, if you if you have something that you could just send to me if you if you you know if you find it. Sure. There's all these numbers. We don't know what they are. There's all these other numbers and you know, we don't we don't know what they are. All right, so that's one. And the other one is with the scanners. Now, they just two weeks ago, maybe not even two weeks ago, they had they said the standard for having issues. Believe, believe it or not, I can't understand what you're saying. Really? Yeah, it come, it's it's garbling. Uh, yeah, my computer, my uh, Wi-Fi is really bad. Okay, keep going. Okay, so the scanners, about two weeks ago, maybe a little less, they said the scanners had to be waiting for um, space because they weren't working correctly. We had, um, in my entire office, the one day, everybody missed a scan. But, but I'm telling you, it's not possible for us all to miss a scan. Okay, there's something not going to Are they looking into this seriously, or are they just saying that they're looking into it? And, no, this is, our, this is our salary. Good. They're looking at everything. Yeah. Because we can't check it. We can't see anything. We don't know what's going on. You know, well, going you can on. go into the rural activity scans. And the postmaster can bring you into the rural activity scans and see what you did that day. <laughs> Do you really want me to go to my postmaster after the end of the day? It's been a long day. I don't want to talk to her. Well, that's up to you. Yeah, but th there isn't a way that we should be able to get in, into it not having to go through the postmaster. I should be able to, like, look at something and get my numbers. No. That that's out of my control. All right. Well, if you can find the if you find if you can find the uh, numbers at some point, because um, we we'd like to know in our office what they all mean. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Victoria Smith. Okay, so last but not least, um, I have a business on my route that closes at 4 p.m. And most days that's before I get there. So what I'm doing is every Monday, normally on your worst days, I'm having to stop there first. So I'm going like a mile each way. How is that going to be recorded, documented any way for that to happen? Is your postmaster aware of this? Oh, yeah. This is every Monday that it happens, and he gives me extra miles for it. And then if it's throughout the week when there's a lot going on or if it's just a heavy load and I'm having to stop what I'm doing to do that as well, just to get their mail there before they close. 
Well, if it's an everyday occurrence, it should be built into your 403, 4003, as long as your postmaster is approved of that. Um, if not, then you should be getting the second trip for that and the, the two minutes per mile. Okay. So it's not an everyday thing, but it's an every week thing for sure. Once a week, sometimes two. All right. So probably the two minutes per mile on that one with the second trip. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sorry, Phil. One more question. No. Um, <laughs> if a business is closed on Saturday, we re-deliver it Monday. How does that work again? All right. For the DPS, if you have seven letters or less, it, you're going to have a piece count for the letters. For the DPS that are eight letters or more, it's a package. Um, other than that, there's no other credit for that. Okay. Thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. Anybody else? I got a question for Mike. Why does he uh, come up under Mike, but when uh, he talks, I, I see him under Courtney. <laughs> My wife's name. I think. I but think yeah, you're on, you're on here. You're on here twice. I I don't know. I unsure why. It would just just me. So it's from my, my wife's computer, computer, so it's under her name. And I try and try yeah, to change it under my name. It, it's fine. Uh, that's no problem at all. Thank Mike, you. Um, Mike, Mike is a voice I recognize a lot, Joe. Well, no, that, that's fine. It's just um, his name's up here. He, you know, he's got an extra block, and then there's one for Courtney. And I, I look and I see his mouth moving, but he's muted, and <laughs> Mike strange. is not. So it, it's just strange from because my standpoint. I'm special. You know. <laughs> it's, because, it's because I'm special. He's a ventriloquist. That's what it is. My whole family is here watching the Zoom. Uh, very good. Well, we'll, uh, well this we'll one over here it. wants to be a mail carrier one day, so he's listening. I, well, that's good. Hey, we we I told him not to. Help. I told him run away. We'll definitely need the help. I just want to take this time to thank everybody for attending. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sorry about the glitches that we had. And, um, you know, the more we do it, the better we're going to get. So hopefully we. We'll have more Zoom meetings, not for the mail survey, though. We're going to try to get some um, Zoom meetings for uh, seminars, different type, like training. Uh, so keep an eye on the website, and we'll get something going. All right, Phil, I'll let you close it up then. All right. I thank you very much for getting on and staying on. Um, of course, if you have any questions, you can contact me or any one of the stewards uh, that were on, or even if they weren't on. But um, just, you know, just remember to do everything you're supposed to do, and make sure that management does everything they're supposed to do, and make sure they do it. You know, when they're out doing the service talks, ask where their stopwatch is. Ask it. You know, ask to see it in RMSS. Because that's just something that should have been doing. And, uh, you know, we know they haven't been. Uh, so just, and we know a lot of the scans haven't been done too, because we get the scan reports. Uh, you know, I got it today. There's still about 15% of the country is not doing the, the six required scans, much less, you know, the, the other ones where you really get paid for it. So just make sure you're getting everything done. Make, make sure you're getting the credit you, you, you can um and watch your back and watch watch your your fellow carriers back because if you got a sub in your office that's not doing them properly just make sure that it gets you know noted and make sure the postmaster is getting the credit for them all i see one more question from jeff yeah i just had one more question on the um now like we're gonna have another mail uh the mini count in october you said well, September will be the count, and it'll be effective at the beginning of the guarantee period. Okay, so my question is, like, after this count, um, if we go over like the forty-eight hours, because I'm at a forty, I'm a forty-seven. If I go over the forty-eight, that will be changed before the next mail count. You'll you'll be a forty-eight until the next mail count. If you remain at over uh, over a forty-seven or higher. After the October count, they are contractually 
they can cut you at that. But we do have an MOU that they can't cut you unless you want to be cut until after the October. Okay, and that's what I was wondering if they're going to do like two counts because the first one's kind of like going to be more or less a, a starter one, I guess, to go from. So I didn't know if like this one because I'm a, I'm a 47, but if I my route has went up a lot and I, I don't think it reflects what I what I get for mail. Because we have a, I haven't had a mail count in probably five years. Well, 2018 was the last mail count. So, yeah, it's been five years. Yeah, and I have not counted. Um, so, I mean, if you're still getting Amazon or if you didn't have Amazon in 2018 and you don't and you and you have it now, you'll probably end up doing very well in this count. No, we don't have Amazon in our office. Well, I mean, I'm concerned about those offices. What, what are they going to do? Um, they're talking about combining a lot of the people into one office. Yes. Yeah. Is, how near in the future is that going to happen for the smaller offices? The Utica move is scheduled to uh, begin on, on February 25th, and then final the final moves will be taking place on June 2nd um, or 3rd, well, one of those days. And then there's there's also another one in Newburgh scheduled for uh, September. And there's another one that I'm not sure of. I think it's Watertown, but I'm not positive. So don't put that on Facebook, anybody. I'm not sure. But I think that um, Watertown would be the next one also looking at a September time frame on that. So like I'm closer to Messina. Okay. You, I mean, is that a far ways off for it, that well, area? Um, you're probably not going to see it anytime soon. Um because what they're doing first is they're using existing postal facilities, which uh, Utica used to be a mail sorting facility. Newburgh used to be a mail sorting facility. So they're going to use those, for, you know, that Donahue shut down, um, Postmaster General Donahue shut down. So they're using them first. And then after that, they're going to start looking at other places for, for that. But right now, you're going to be safe this year for sure. Okay. After that. After that I'm not going to make any promises. <laughs> okay. And uh, one last thing, it doesn't really pertain to this, but it, um, like when I went full time, um, they made me wait a year almost. They said I had, they had to go through a mail count before I could take the full time position. And they're just not doing that anymore. Like the other route in our office. When, when, that came, when, when did you become a regular? Uh, 2002. All right. At that time, they were holding routes for DPS. Uh, later on in 2011 and 12, they were holding routes for FSS. And then when the contract changed, they were holding routes for excess employees. We're not holding routes anymore. It's always come back to burn us. We're just not holding routes anymore. They have okay. to be within the 30 days. Right. I didn't know if there was any way of being compensated for that eight months I had to wait. No. No. Like, to be toward the time right unfortunately no okay that's all i guess thank you for everything oh, uh brian i see you got a question hey what's up phil um hey, brian. yeah i i he mentioned something about the uh route being cut after 48 so well, i've been a contractually a 47 can be cut okay i've been over like a 48k for you know, since I had the route. Um, so can I, after this survey, is it going to get cut or will I have to wait till October to get cut? Or well, if you want it cut, you can ask for it to be cut. Okay. So I, so I have a choice. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, that's it for now, Phil. Thanks. All right, Brian. Appreciate it. No problem. Margaret Duffin. Hi, I just wanted to say thank you very much for these seminars that you're doing, and I hope you continue to do them. They're very informative, and I love them. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, 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 I will continue as long as I'm in this position. So, you know, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Appreciate it. All right. 